choice but to lace up. Every day is game day, off my third contract, you still on that same play. Pop spit it out, but I got family sitting chain lace. Oh, you about that action, tell them boys you about the same thing. Get your popcorn ready, hat made half amazing. Human highlight reel, you gon' sing my name in Beijing. Heavy rep I take, you'll see the pain that made me. This gritty on a gridiron, only one of us can stay king. Touchdown every time I touch down, and my defense shut down every time I touch ground. Yeah, lying harder, but I got the eye of an eagle. I put the city on my back. Look, I'm gonna ride for my people, and once I take the stage, I'ma start like evil can evil. I built the conquer heights. My mind's a Danny DeVito, and once I get my first ring, I'm manifesting the sequel. Yo, this the IFL. I swear to me, become heroes of in the end. Oh, oh.
what's up? Every day is game day. Off my third contract, you still on that same play. I spit it out, but I got family sitting chain lace. Oh, you about that action? Tell them boys you about the same thing. Get your popcorn ready. Hat made half amazing. Human highlight reel. You gon' see my name in Beijing. Heavy rep I take. You gon' see the pain that made me. It's gritty on a gridiron. Only one of us can stay king. Touchdown every time I touch down, and my defense shut down every time I touch ground. Yeah, lying harder, but I got the eye of an eagle. I put the city on my back. Look, I'm gonna ride for my people. And once I take the stage, I'ma start like evil Knievel. I built the conquer heights. My mind's a Danny DeVito. And once I get my first ring, I'm manifesting the sequel. Yo, this the IFL. Swear to me, them heroes are in the end. Oh, oh. Are you ready for that?
choice but to lace up. Every day is game day, off my third pond track. You still on that same play? Pops made it out, but I got family sitting chain lace. Oh, you about that action? Tell them boys you about the same thing. Get your popcorn ready, hat made half amazing. Human highlight reel, you gon' sing my name in Beijing. Heavy rep I take, you'll see the pain that made me. This gritty on a gridiron, only one of us can stay king. Touchdown every time I touch down, and my defense shut down every time I touch ground. Yeah, lying harder, but I got the eye of an eagle. I put the city on my back. Look, I'm gonna ride for my people, and once I take the stage, I'm gonna start like evil Knievel. I built the conquer heights. My mind's a Danny DeVito, and once I get my first ring, I'm manifesting the sequel. Yo, this the IFL. I swear to me, become heroes of the end.
day is game day. Off my third contract, you still on that same play. I spit it out, but I got family sitting chain lace. Oh, you about that action? Tell them boys you about the same thing. Get your popcorn ready. Half me half amazing. Human highlight reel. You gon' see my name in Beijing. Heavy rep I take. You'll see the pain that made me. It's gritty on a gridiron. Only one of us can stay king. Touchdown every time I touch down, and my defense shut down every time I touch ground. Yeah, lying harder, but I got the eye of an eagle. I put the city on my back. Look, I'm gonna ride for my people. And once I take the stage, I'ma start like evil can evil. I built the conquer heights. My mind's a Danny DeVito. And once I get my first ring, I'm manifesting the sequel. Yo, this the IFL. Swear to many come heroes of in the end. Are you ready for that?
choice but to lace up Every day is game day Off my third contract You still on that same play Pop spit it out But I got family sitting chain links Oh you bout that action Tell them boys you bout the same thing Get your popcorn ready Hat made half amazing Human highlight reel You gon' sing my name in Beijing Heavy rep I take You gon' see the pain that made me This gritty on a gridiron Only one of us can stay king Touchdown every time I touch down And my defense shut down Every time I touch ground Yeah Lying harder But I got the eye of an eagle I put the city on my back with I'm gonna ride for my people And once I take the stage I'ma start like evil Knievel I built to conquer heights My mind's a Danny DeVito And once I get my first ring I'm manifesting the sequel Yo, this the IFL I swear to me Become heroes of in the end Are you ready for that? Tell them boys you about the same thing Get your popcorn ready Hat made half amazing Human highlight reel You gon' sing my name in Beijing Heavy rep I take You gon' see the pain that made me This gritty on a gridiron Only one of us can stay in king Touchdown every time I touch down And my defense shut down Every time I touch ground Yeah, lying harder But I got the eye of an eagle I put the city on my back Look, I'm gonna ride for my people And once I take the stage I'ma start like evil Knievel I built to conquer heights My mind's a Danny DeVito And once I get my first I'm manifesting the sequel, yo, this the IFL I swear to me, become heroes of in the end Are you ready for that? Rancho Event Center. Both teams looking for their first win of the season. Billy Back and the Tucson Sugar Skulls are in town. We'll Referee Mike Check. Excellent. In just a moment, but first we'll turn to the IFL Special Teams Player of the Week, Ernesto Lacayo. First of all, congratulations. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. So tell me about this drop kick. Is this something you have kind of been working on? Is it something the coaches said, hey, we need to put some more points up? Like, how did this all come about? Well, I have been working on it in the off season. Never expecting to do it just in case. Uh, that being said, we had never practiced it until the first uh, attempt at the game. So we'll give it a shot, but it's also muscle memory and just making sure you have a good drop. That's the most important thing in the drop kick. It's not easy, but as long as you have a good drop, you have a chance. So take us through the whole mechanics of that because it, you make it look really smooth when you're doing it. I mean, it's it's not as easy as it looks. I mean, I may have been lucky a little bit in that case, but you just want to make sure you, you limit your steps, grab it like a rugby ball at the same time, less uh, room for error and just making sure to get that drop right and just putting it through. But it's nice to have an extra blocker that's more blocking for us. Ernesto, again, congratulations. Good luck tonight. I appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Daryl, I, I know one thing the Gladiators will have to do tonight, and that's stop Gladiator killer Mike Jones and that running attack, right? It seems like every time he plays against us, he makes some pay. He always does. And Mike is a heck of a talent. I mean, he's got the size, the speed, I mean, and, and he's been in the IFL for quite some time, so he has knowledge of the game. 
he knows where to hit the holes and where, where to have that speed burst. More importantly, though, will the offense find some rhythm? Third start of the season for Javin Kilgo. And you really you can't hang everything on him, right? The running game has been almost non-existent. 27 yards on the ground in two games. Uh, you know, one of the greatest gladiator of all time, Della Davis, used to say, as long as everyone does their one-eighth, we're going to be all right. It's time for everyone to start doing that one-eighth. Can't hang it all on Javin, right? Exactly. I mean, Javin has to step up as well. You can't turn the, turn the ball over. But we talked about this before. A lot of emphasis goes on his wide receivers. These guys have to make the right reads and be available for Javin to make the right reads and to catch the ball. They have to work on their technique in catching the ball and, again, the run game as well. Let's see who can get their first win of the season. The Sugar Schools are four and a half point favorites on the road. Kickoff is next. Ain't got no choice but to lace up. Every day is game day. Off my third contract. You still on that same play. Lying harder, but I got the eye of an eagle. I put the city on my back. Look, I'm gonna ride for my people. And once I take the stage, I'm gonna start like evil can evil. I built the conquer heights. My mind's a daddy defeated. When once I get my first ring, I'm manifesting the sequel. Yo, this the IFL. Swear to me, make them heroes are in the end. Oh, oh. Are you ready for that? Ball first, the deep man is McCall from the Ohio State <laughs> University, Daryl. How does that make you feel being a Michigan man? I can't say that out loud. Actually, I can because we have bragging rights for what, three years, two years? Kerrigan's back there as well. The IFL's special teams player of the week, Ernesto Lacayo, will get us underway here. An onside kick attempt early. Flag on the play. Did that go the 10 yards? I don't know. I think that. Ernesto looked he like he was upset. It before. Looked like there was an early touch. He's going to be close. We'll check the laundry right away. Haven't had a chance to look at the replay yet, but just by the way Ernesto was jumping up and down, I think he was upset that maybe one of his guys touched it early. If you're just joining us, the Sugar Skulls, four and a half point favorites on the road this week. Both teams looking for their first win of the season. Let's go downstairs for the announcement. First, with their quarterback Malik Mitchell, nine for 17, a touchdown and an interception. Mitchell will lead out the offense here. But the the guy to watch, as always, we talked about it pregame. It's Jones, gladiator killer, Daryl, Mike Jones, the veteran running back out of Bethune Cookman. You remember there was a year where he had. 25% of his rushing touchdowns came against the Duke City Gladiator. <laughs> that is how good he is when he is playing the Gladiators. Whether it's here or whether it's in Tucson, he just annihilates. No Jason Serta defensively this week. Dealing with a little bit of a toe. In the air, and it is caught for the touchdown. An early score for Tucson. It's Chris Jackson, the BYU man, brings it in. And that, that's unfortunate. I mean, that's, that's super unfortunate there because as you can see, Greg Thomas, defensive back on the coverage at the time, was in great position. Ball just looked like it went right through his hands. So great job being in, in position to make that play, but you just got to make the play. It's Dimitri Patinos, the kicker, to add the extra point. And it's good. Less than a minute in, Tucson's on the board first, 7-0.
I'm David C. Chavis. Just like you, we see terrible motorcycle, semi-truck, and car wrecks every day. We fight to win for you. I'm a top 10 nationally ranked injury attorney, but I'm still as local as red and green. Are you ready for Ram Truck Month at Malloy Ram in Los Lunas? With huge discounts and new trucks arriving daily, when you think Ram, think Malloy Ram in Los Lunas. Welcome back here to the event center. Already 7 nothing. Tucson start. As Latinos gets ready to kick it away here. Gladiator offense will have to respond. We'll uh, expand a little bit on our pregame thoughts on that offense in just a moment. First the kick, it'll go through the end zone. We were talking a little bit how in the pregame you can't pin this all on Javin, right? Only 27 yards rushing on the ground through two games, Daryl. That, that, that has to improve tonight. Exactly, and we all know a good passing game is helped by a great rushing attack as well. So I know the, the coach Landry devises a great game plan to keep the Gladiators offense balanced, but they just have to go out and execute it. And as far as the receivers, they have to make the right reads and know when to sit down in the holes, when to get your head around on, on hot routes and, and make the right reads to make it easier for, for quarterback Javin Kilgore. It hasn't been a good start for Javin, 24 for 49, seven touchdowns, five interceptions. That's been the problem, it's been the turnover. I was talking to offensive coordinator Landrick Brody before the game, as that one's complete. To Sloan and coach Brody was talking about hey last week we were in a position to win that game if we don't turn over the ball he thought Javin progressed nicely from week to week uh, you know obviously the touchdowns were there but so were the interceptions and, it, and you mentioned you can't put it all on Javin Kilgo but you can put some of it on that he has to know uh, how to protect the ball and he has to protect the ball in, in clutch situations and clutch time in ball game Jakar and there's some more of those struggles on the ground. No gain, a loss on the play. So that'll bring up third and six. And Tucson has a, has a pretty good rush defense as well. So it's going to be a, a challenge for the Gladiators this game to find some type of success against this rushing attack or this rush defense. But they're going to have to do it to take some of the pressure off of Jevin Kilgore. But I like the first pass he had start the game off an easy simple throw just to get his confidence up and see if they can keep it going now on third there's a flag on the play Kilgo being chased and he throws it into the seats it's incomplete on third down fan gets a lucky souvenir Which Brody wanted a pass interference but the flag came before the snap or at the snap illegal defense number five Five-yard penalty results in the first down. is called for the illegal defense. Lineman was not down in his stance at the snap. 56. He was Correction not down the in number, his stance number 56. at the snap. Goes back to action for some an explanation, some clearance on clarification on this on that call. It is enough for a gladiator's first seven nothing Tucson. Gladiators get some fresh set of downs. Let's see if they can develop some momentum here. He'll try with Carr again. This time he finds a little bit of room at the dasher. We see an early effort for the Gladiators to try to establish that run. And Carr did a good job of sitting behind his offensive line and waiting for the opportune time to hit that speed first to pick up some positive yards. He uses his size to his advantage. I mean, he's listed here at 5'7", 180 pounds. So did a good job behind it, behind those, those big offensive linemen he has there, picking up some positive yards for the Glad Gladiators. Gladiators did bring him a second quarterback this week, Jeremy Hickbottom, former D.C. defender. Pitch to the right, Carr cuts back to the left, has some room, and he is in for the Gladiator touchdown on the ground. Establishing the running attack, Carr punches it in. Great job, great vision. Cutting back on that running play, finding the open lane, and getting into the end zone. Great job by Carr. 
That's the Gladiators' second rushing touchdown of the season. The other belonged to quarterback Taz Wilson. That was outstanding speed as well. I mean, now here comes Lakayo. He he was the special teams player of the week because he executed five drop kicks last week, and those are worth two. So he'll attempt the drop kick again here. He was talking to us about it pregame. There it is, and it's blocked. Oh, we'll signal. Like we're, we're, we're kind of blocked out of that view. Great heads up play by the offensive lineman there. So the try on the drop kick's no good. 7-6 Tucson. Try is no good. Paletta Bar Tramway. Our palettas are high quality pops and a delicious healthy choice. Our refreshing flavors are the perfect treat for the summertime. Come and see us at 12501 Candelaria Road Northeast, Suite D. Sip means sit, Albuquerque's dog training experts. We offer in-home dog and puppy obedience training. Contact us at 505-916-1748 to schedule a free dog training evaluation. Offside, number 23, kicking team. Ball went out of bounds in the air. By rule, will be placed at the 25, the 20 yard line. Five yard penalty being enforced from that spot. It is first down. Well, let's see if the Gladiators are able to settle down. I mean, his defense is good, even on that first touchdown, the defensive back was in, in a great position, just missed the play there. So let's see if this defense can settle down, get into their rhythm, and be as dominant as, as they have thus far. Second offensive possession for Mitchell. Kent State, man, at quarterback. Trying to find some room. He was able to get around Hart for a short gain. as Tate and Bird were exchanging words. And Mitchell's got some athleticism to him as well. I mean, he's a great, he's a, he's a good pocket passer as well, but as you see there, he's able to use his legs to get outside the pocket and, and create something on the run. Well, and running is what he wants to do, Daryl. We mentioned he was nine for 17 for 128 yards with a touchdown and an interception. But on the ground that game, he carried it 12 times for 98 yards, four rushing touchdowns in their week one game. So definitely dynamic with his legs. So McDowell and Hart will have to try to contain him. And without Serta this week, that might be a little challenge. As there he finds some room. And there he's big enough to get by guys as well because he's brought down inside the 15-yard line. It's enough for a Skull's first down. And McDowell's down on the turf injured. That's a piece that the Gladiators cannot afford to be without defensively. Especially if Serta is out as well. That will be a huge blow for this defense. Gladiators have a bye next week. So they'll hope to get Serta back in time for their next game. But right now the concern is McDowell. And Coach Griggs will help him up. It looks like he's all right. Good to see him be able to walk off the field on his own power as well. Because they've been moving him around a little bit on the defensive line. He can play on either side or the nose. He's such a weapon. That size and speed, you don't see that combination a lot. Exactly. 6'7", 285 pounds out of Michigan State. 
Yeah, he's a heck of a player. The Gladiators are definitely going to miss him, so let's hope he can return to the lineup pretty soon. So it's first down here at the 14-yard line. 9-11 to go in the first, 7-6 Tucson. They give it to Mike Jones, who's brought down shy of the five by Claiborne. But when they get down here in the red zone, you know where the ball's going. It's going to gladiator killer Mike Jones. Exactly, and as you saw there, he has such great vision. He knows when and where to make the, the precise cuts to pick up those positive yards. So yes, he has a lot of speed and power and explosiveness, but I, I think it's his vision that makes him such a dynamic running back. You know, I've had it with him myself. Either he needs to retire <laughs> or we just need to sign him. One of the two. This time they'll give it instead to Kerrigan on the carry. Gets it inside the five. But that was enough for a first. So they'll set up first and goal now inside the five-yard line. Now it's Mike Jones' time, isn't it? You can. I bet my money on it. <laughs> I definitely bet my money on and it. And we know how tight you are with your money. So <laughs> that's saying a that's lot. True. That is true. It's very true. 33 yards coming into the game for Jones. He already has two rushing touchdowns on the season. There's a flag on the play. Mitchell sees the room, and the end zone's wide open for Mitchell. This might I think this is coming back. Let's see. Yeah, this might be a legal defense. Well, then it's not. If so, then the play will stand. It'll be a touchdown. Illegal defense, number Good 23, idea. aligned with inside the belt. What can the I penalty say? is declined. Result of the play is a touchdown. Illegal defense, it's a rushing touchdown for Mitchell. I mean, he went in untouched. Huge hole. Take us through this replay, Daryl. Outstanding. I mean, we all talked about it in pregame as well. I mean, he's dynamic with his legs, and when you give him that much room to operate, I mean, that's a walk-in touchdown for Mitchell. That's his fifth rushing touchdown of the season already, and remember, this is only their second game. Tucson in front, 14-6. We'll be right back. The Southwest Carpenters Local 1390 wants you to find a fulfilling career in our community. Call us at 505-266-8869 to find out more. All back with Daryl Stoneham. It's a 14-6 Tucson start, 7.36 to go in the first. Both teams looking for their first win of the season here. And so far, this uh, Tucson offense has looked good. They've had, definitely had a strong start to start this game off. I mean, two, two drives, two touchdowns. And you can see on that last touchdown for Mitchell, kind of missed Serta there, plugging up that middle, right? Yeah, especially with McDowell going out as well. I mean, that's... It's pretty much a walk-in touchdown for, for the Sugar to Bowls. So we'll hopefully McDowell will be back out there. We'll see on the next Skull's offensive possession. The deep man's Greg Thomas. Dent is the up man. This will be a returnable ball. No, it'll skip into the seats. 
And that's where Javin Kilgo will start the second offensive possession, 7.36 to go here in this first. Great job of establishing the run game, the previous drive for the Gladiators. Definitely takes a lot of pressure off of, of, of Kilgo as well. Let's see if they can keep that success on the run game, which will open up the passing game and give Javin some, some easy reads to hit his targets. Yeah, Carr, the running back, Oklahoma State man. Finished up at Texas A&M Kingsville. Drive starting at the five. Short dump pass off to Gonzalez. We did not see at home last time. Laquiviante Gonzalez, well traveled in college, Texas A&M to Kansas to Southeastern. Some time with the Rams as an undrafted free agent. The Gladiators are really high on this guy. He's yeah. got he's got some explosiveness. He's got great hands, great ability to catch the ball in traffic, which is. In the, Basically, that's a lot of catches here in the indoor game with the field being so condensed as it is. So, yeah, he's great for the indoor game and great pickup for the Gladiators as well. Second and 11, there was a loss of a yard on the play, and Kilgo has to burn a timeout here before the delay of game. So the Gladiators have to burn one. We'll step aside, come right back. Prior to the delay of game, timeout. the timeout now the second and 11 play coming up a little slant that one's complete to uh, Gonzalez we'll bring up third and medium here Great job by Javin taking what the defense gives him. You don't want, you can tell in previous, he may have taken slowing down the field, but take the easy throw, completions, move the ball. Dents open for the first down, and there's where he goes. Kilgo gets the first on Greg Dent Jr.'s first catch of the night. Yep, you don't have to get it all in one play. Move the ball down the field methodically. He's doing a great job of finding his open receivers. The receivers are doing a great job of finding the open holes in the zones and showing their numbers. Kilgo gets rid of oh. it quickly, and it's picked off. Intercepted by Sheffield. Right to Sheffield for the interception. That's the sixth interception of the year already for Javid Kilgo. That was a great job by Sheffield of baiting Kilgo. We watched the, the replay here. He does a great job of baiting like he's in a soft cover zone, like maybe like a cover two zone. And at the last minute, drops back in the cover Darryl. three. We don't have a telestrator. It's not in the budget. <laughs> so watch it there. He baits it like he's dropping in that zone. But, I mean, that's that's just an ill-advised throw as well. You got two guys there right there in, in the alley. So it's hard to see what Kilgo is reading on that one. But nonetheless, a great job, great interception by, by Sheffield there. So the Skulls right back on offense here. Mitchell and company have looked good early. Mitchell on the ground has found a lot of space. Two receivers in motion on the right side. They'll hand it off to Mike Jones, who's brought down by Hart. We're going to say that a lot today. And McDowell is back out there. That's good news for Gladiator fans. But again, I think the main thing, and it's glad to have McDowell back here on, on the defense for the Gladiators, but the main thing of is trying to, to limit Mike Jones. It's going to be definitely difficult to stop him completely or, or shut him down. Well, but you have to keep him out of the red zone because that's where Mike exactly. Jones does his damage, right? Exactly. So wow. 
second and eight. They'll blow this one dead. Coach Billy Back has to burn the timeout. This timeout. Time. Tucson, their so first the of the half. The clock was expiring on Coach Back, and a timeout for Tucson. We'll be right back. event center here. Coach Back took the timeout. First year at the helm in Tucson. Took over for the uh, IFL Coach of the Year, Hurtis Chen, who is the offensive coordinator in Vegas for the Nighthawks this year. Mitchell looking. Has time. A couple of pumps. Now has a man open at the wall. And he churns. I think they're going to give him the progress very close to the first on the completion to Mike Kerrigan. Credit Mitchell had all day to stand in the box he for did. something to develop. He did. A great job by Jackson as well, being there to, to limit that game and also trying to strip the ball, strip the ball as well and create a turnover. But and they did not give him the progress for the first. The big third down for this Gladiator defense. We talked about keeping Mike Jones out of the red zone. He's already in it, so if they're able to to, to stop them to a fourth down here, that makes it a, a lot difficult for Tucson. Puts a lot of pressure on Coach Back to make a decision. Third and two. They'll give it to, fake it to Jones. Mitchell will keep. He turns the corner into the dasher. He's got enough for the first. No, he's in. The signal is touchdown. Wow. I'm sure that's going to bring out a red flag maybe. Let's see. Let's see if we can see this replay. It definitely looks like he got hit into the wall. Let's, let's see here. This is up on the live board. This should help Coach Bramante and Coach Greg see if they want to challenge. Coach Back's trying to get the play in quickly. Right there, he was touched while making contact with the wall. Gladiators are not going to challenge. So the touchdown will stand, and the extra point will count. 21-6, Tucson. Roadrunner Realty and Investments is a proud partner of your Duke City Gladiators. This is a true story. A client of the law firm of David C. Chavez, LLC, was tragically injured by a distracted truck driver. His medical bills more than $5 million in rising. They immediately began the investigation, hiring the best experts in the nation, and filed the appropriate court action against a billion-dollar corporation. Sebastian Noel back with former Chiefs wideout. Daryl Stoneham, quick start for Tucson. And the defense has been the strong suit for this Gladiators team the first two weeks of this uh, Kind of gives you something to be concerned about, Daryl. Exactly. So They're missing Serta, aren't they? It, that's exactly what I was about to bring up. Serta is not only a 
a, a, a force to be reckoned with for this defense, but he's the leader and the captain of this defense as well. So his presence is definitely being missed out there. He's sitting in the stands wearing an Atlanta Braves jersey. So. Smart man. I knew I liked Ooh. Jason. You got to get him a Dodger. No. <laughs> this will be a returnable ball for Thomas. He escapes the tackle of Sheffield, but not Tate. His return just past the 10. And then some words after. C.J. Tate out of Oklahoma State University. Now the flag comes out. So there, somebody got an unsportsmanlike. I wouldn't be surprised if this was on both teams and offsetting, but let's see. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct number 21, defense. 15-yard penalty. It is first down, Duke City. Penalties on Jalen Phelps, the DB out of Eastern Michigan. Phelps is uh, proclaiming his innocence. He's got to be careful because he already got one. Exactly. But this sets the Gladiators up in great field position. So let's see if they're able to capitalize on this field position and put one into the end zone here. Javin has to be able to protect the football. You know, the Gladiators have a ton of return options as well. Uh, Laquiviante Le Gonzalez holds all kinds of returning records uh, in his last stop in college. So they have so many options back there in the returning game. This one's on the ground. They'll hand it to Carr. Got a flag on the play here. Is that a flag or a piece of equipment? It might get a holding no, call. No, it's a flag. Elijah Lipscomb's uh, pointing the other way like it's against Tucson. Let's see. Illegal defense, number 23. In the belt, not aligned with the receiver. Five-yard penalty will remain first down. Jalen Floyd was in the belt. So it's illegal defense. It's still great to see the, uh, a positive run game for this Gladiators offense as well. That's been one of the highlights in this game so far is the, is the rushing attack. The belt, by the way, is the area five yards beyond the defensive line of scrimmage, which a DB cannot be inside the belt prior to the snap. Receivers are motion on the right side. Kilgo looking that way, fires into the end zone, up and over. What an amazing touchdown catch for Journey Sloan. Outstanding job and great ball placement by Javin Kilgo. You saw it there, he had a great pump fake there. To Create that separation. It must have been a double move right here. Great pump to hold the DB just a little bit. Outstanding ball placement. And Sloan does a great job of going up, getting that ball, and absorbing the contact through the wall for the Gladiator touchdown. Sloan was a bright spot last week in Frisco, and he picks up right where he left off. Lakayo's going to attempt another drop kick here. The snap was a little wide. The drop kick is good, but there is a flag on the play. A lot of flags early in this one. Let's see. Let's go down for the announcement. So this will be against Tucson, and the Gladiators will have this in the bank, I would assume. So the two-point drop kick is good for the special teams player of the week, Lakayo. We'll go down for the official announcement here. Illegal defense, number seven, not down in his stance at the snap. The penalty is declined, try is good. Actually, it's not in the bank apparently, it's declined. And the two point drop kick is good for the world's most interesting man. We'll be right back.
Augusto Lacayo, one of the world's most interesting man, picks up right where he left off. The drop kick for two makes it 21 14. Let's see if he attempts a deuce here. It has the distance and the direction right off the lawyer's forehead. That's another two points, courtesy of the right leg of the IFL Special Teams Player of the Week. Free Nestor kick Lakaio. is good for like a that, deuce. It's 21-16, thanks to Lakayo. He's a weapon, I was Darryl. just about to say that. He, 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 such a weapon for this Gladiator team. I mean, right then and there, he just accounted for four points. I mean, that's, that's outstanding. He's a huge weapon for this team. And when your offense is struggling and your quarterback's throwing interceptions, you need points from anywhere, right? And he's the, man, he's the guy to get it for you. That's why we call him the most interesting man in the world. <laughs> All right, if I know Coach Fred Griggs and, and Bermonte, I know this defense is, has had a, a nice talking to on the sideline there. So let's see if they're able to, to get it together and show their dominance that they have thus far in the season. Mitchell, they're trying to stop McDowell from getting there, and it's complete again to Kerrigan. It took a double team on McDowell to stop him, but they were able to give Mitchell just enough time to complete another one to Kerrigan. I mean, and I'm watching it here. you got to give a lot of credit to the offensive line here for the Tucson Sugar Bowl. I mean, they're doing a great job of providing protection for Mitchell to have four or five seconds back there to throw the ball. And four or five seconds is a long time, even in an outdoor game. But you give a quarterback five seconds to throw the ball in an indoor game, oh, that's a, pretty much an automatic completion. So now Isaiah Bean is in on the right side of that defense. Mitchell just dumps it off to Mike Jones. Hart with the tackle into the wall. As we're coming down on the waning moments of this first quarter. That'll do it for the first. It's 21-16 Tucson. That is the end Ernesto of the first Lakaio's quarter. Ernesto right leg keeping the Gladiators in it. Second quarter when we come back. I'm David C. Chavis. Just like you, we see terrible motorcycle, semi-truck, and car wrecks every day. We fight to win for you. I'm a top 10 nationally ranked injury attorney, but I'm still as local as red and green. Are you ready for Ram Truck Month at Malloy Ram in Los Lunas? With huge discounts and new trucks arriving daily, when you think Ram, think Malloy Ram in Los Lunas. MalloyCJDR.com. Welcome back. Second quarter about to begin. It's 21 16. The over under was 85 and a half. Uh, the over looks like a good bet for that one. Yeah, I'd say so myself. Mitchell has another open look at Kerrigan. Those jerseys are pretty bright. They can't seem to find Kerrigan. And the, the, the Gladiators are giving these receivers you a, like that, a huh? ton of, <laughs> They're giving these receivers a ton of cushion and a lot of respect for the deep ball. So, I mean, they're going to have to kind of close that cushion and close that gap a little bit right there because you're giving Mitchell an easy target. Again now in the scoring territory here are the Skulls. 
This time it's Mike Jones, turns the corner, and he's in. Gladiator killer Mike Jones strikes again. Great vision and more importantly, great patience there on that rushing touchdown by Mike Jones. And he did a great job of setting up his blockers and waiting for the opportune moment to have that speed burst for the touchdown. Watch here. Watch him pause right there, and you'll see him peer right on the wall. Did a great job setting up that block and exploded in for, for an easy touchdown for the, for the ship scores. That's Big Mike's third rushing touchdown of the season. The kick is through, and it's good. Tucson adds to the lead, 28-16, Sugar Skull. Paletta Bar Tramway. Our paletas are high-quality pops and a delicious, healthy choice. Our refreshing flavors are the perfect treat for the summertime. Come and see us at 12501 Candelaria Road Northeast, Suite D. Sip means sit, Albuquerque's dog training experts. We offer in-home dog and puppy obedience training. Contact us at 505-916-1748 to schedule a free dog training evaluation. Second quarter just underway, 13.33 to go in this first half, 28-16. Tucson in front, smashing it with Daryl Stoneham. Awaiting the Gladiator return here. They'll send Greg Thomas back to return this. Dent is the up man. You guys are just now tuning in. Mike Jones continues to be a Gladiator crusher. Here for the Sugar Skulls, already with, with with two, one rushing touchdown here in the ball game. One for Big Mike, two for Mitchell. Thomas will start the return at the two. He's got some room. There's a flag on the play. As Thomas crosses midfield, there was a flag, two of them. Might be a holding call on the Gladiators. Let's go down for the announcement. During the return, holding, number 19, return team. Penalty being forced half the distance to the goal. It is a first Martin. down. It's unfortunate because the wipes away a great return by Thomas. Longest return of the season for the Gladiators. We'll back him up. Gladiators will go from starting this drive in Sugar Skull territory to at their own, I believe, five, five yard line. That's a huge penalty there, but Kilgo is coming right up as in conflict with the catch. And that's his first catch. Former uh, Omaha Beef receiver. And Concliffe is a unit himself. My goodness, is we, we just got a, a up close <laughs> view of him sky up and go get that ball out of the air. That's a great job of picking picking that that ball up in a cover two hole shot. But it, like you said, 6'2", 240 pounds. That's very impressive to see him go up in the sky and pluck that ball out of the air. New set of downs here. This time they'll give to Carr, carving up some space. And that is just shy of the first. Bring up second in a yard. Maybe less than a yard. Great job by this gladiator offensive line of pushing these sugar scores defensive line around. Creating open lanes and holes for Carr to find, and great job by Carr finding him and actually hitting him. There's no hesitation, there's no room to second guess. Once you see that little crease, 
you got to hit it, and he's doing that thus far. Motion receivers on the left side. Kilgore will float it at the wall there. Him and Carr not on the same page. Coach Brody, the offensive coordinator, wanted a pass interference there. I think the referees are saying that since he was behind the line of scrimmage. Yeah, Carr didn't run that wheel route there. Yeah. Stayed at the line of scrimmage. I think the Gladiators are arguing that the ball was in the air. I mean, he, he can create that contact before the ball is in the air since he's behind the line of scrimmage. But once the ball goes in the air, it's normal pass interference rules. 11.05 and counting here, remaining in the half. It's third down in a yard. Back on the ground to Carr. He's got the first down and more. Still on his feet. Finally brought down inside the five yard line. Touchdown saving tackle over there by Jalen Floyd. It's great vision on the jump cut there by Carr. Outstanding job and, and, and foot quickness as well to be able to make that cut and explode out of it to pick up that, that first down. First and goal at the four. He'll go, we'll give it to Carr. There's a flag on the play, and this one's a loss. Flags in the end zone. Phelps and uh, Zion DeBose on the tackle. Uh, we'll check the laundry here. We're definitely going to get another illegal defense. And the Sugar Skulls. It looks like it's going to be on Farrell just based on the way uh, Traveris is yelling at the officials. Illegal defense, number nine, aligned within the box. That penalty being forced half the distance to the goal remains first down. It's on Jackson, the illegal defense. First and goal, half the distance here. In this area of the of the field in the red zone, you definitely want to protect the ball if you're driving kill goal. Best way to protect it is to run it, but Carr is swallowed up again. Kilgo had a lot of room on the left side there if he pulls that one, Daryl. He does. Instead, it's a loss on the play. Make it second and goal back from the seven. And the Sugar Scrolls are going to challenge Kilgo on this. They're not going to allow Carr to, to rush this ball in the, in the end zone. They're going to send a lot of blitzes, and they're going to play their defensive backs in press coverage. So Javin's going to have to make a great throw, a great read, and his receivers are going to have to do a great job of creating separation off the press coverage. Kilgo fires towards the end zone, and it's well incomplete. And again, that's a great coverage by number four, Sheff Sheffield again. We talk about them playing that press coverage. We saw Cuncliffe down here get jammed on, on the line of scrimmage on his slant route, but he came open a little late. If Javin was able to hold that a second longer and, and see him come across the middle of the field, but great job of the of defense there by the Sugar Skulls. And again, Javin's going to have to make a, a tight throw and a tight window if the Gladiators are going to want to score on here on this drive. It's third and goal. Gladiators have not been good in the red zone. Kilgo has a man and he's open. It's a card. Touchdown. Gladiators punch it in on third down. Wide open. It's definitely a, a busted coverage there by the Sugar Spurs. Car was wide open there on the wall. Car second, one on the ground, one through the air. So here comes a Kyle for another drop kick here. Drop kick is no good. A rare miss on the drop kick by Lakayo. See if he attempts to deuce here to make up for it. So the score 28 16. We'll be right back.
one more look at the touchdown that made it 28 22 in favor of Tucson. I beg your pardon on the car touchdown. Uh, the, two, the drop kick was no good. Let's we'll see if Lacayo attempts to do here. How's the leg just wide right? You know, the thing with Lakayo's attempts, I mean, they're not, like, he doesn't sh ever shank one into the seats. Like, he's just missing, Daryl. Just missing these. And that's, remember, this half the half as wide as an NFL uh, goalpost. So, like, that's a tiny area. It's difficult. And Lakayo's misses, I mean, they're they're not by a lot, Daryl. Yeah, the fact that he's made as many as he has, not only this season thus far, but in his entire career in general, it just is, shows how dynamic of a place kicker he is. Eight minutes remaining in the half here, 28-22, in favor of Tucson. You gotta give a lot of credit to Gladiator's offensive coordinator, Landrick Brody. He's done a great job of settling Javin Kilgo in, giving him easy short throws to start the game, get his confidence up, easy completions, move the ball down the field, and it hasn't put a lot of pressure on Kilgo and the run game as well. Mitchell all day again incomplete. My goodness. 28-22. Favor of Tucson. Gladiators defensive bat Onwood had a free shot at Mitchell and he took it on him as well. Mitchell took a pretty big shot there. But that's what the Gladiators are gonna need to do. They're gonna need to get some pressure on Mitchell, get some sacks. Get him on the ground. He's had too much time back there in the backfield. You, know, you got to give a lot of credit to his offensive line, but he's had three, four, five seconds back there to throw the ball. They're going to have to cut that down a tad bit. Mitchell, all day again, fires into the end zone. Oh. Didn't complete. The flag on the play might be roughing the passer here. Kerrigan also took a dive, tried to buy a PI. He didn't get that. down to the announcement. Personal foul, roughing the passer. Number 12, defense. Comes to be enforced half the distance to the goal, resulting in an automatic first down. It is a roughing the passer penalty. Let's we'll take another look at it if we can. I was watching the ball into the end zone. I didn't see the hit on the quarterback. Me neither. We talked about the gladiators having to get some pressure and get some touches on Mitchell. But... Yeah, I mean, he's... Credit this big Tucson offensive line, though. They have protected him tonight. Exactly, but you want to be smart when you do get home. Don't want to cost your team 15 yards. They'll give it to Jones, and he's wrapped up by Claiborne. A rare negative run for Mike Jones. All thanks to Trevon Claiborne. And Claiborne's having an excellent drive here so far. He's got did a great job of getting pressure on the first, first play on Mitchell. And as you saw there, did an outstanding job of bringing Mike Jones down in the backfield for a huge loss. Six minutes and counting to go here in the half. Second down, Mitchell back to pass. Again, he's got all day. Rolling, he's finally chopped down by Solomon Jackson. Coach Griggs wanted a hold, I think. And he definitely has an argument for it as well. A lot of times Mitchell escapes out of the pocket. His offensive linemen are in unopportune positions and that's normally where holding calls take place. So I think Coach Griggs is arguing that point. Like when he escapes out of the pocket, you got to watch for the holding calls because that's where his offensive lineman can't tell where he is, and the defense reacts, and that's when you get that holding call. Timeout for Billy back here. Five minutes, five seconds remaining in the first half. We'll be right back. You're a crack of dome, Monday morning coffee, strong corn, everything you got into a paycheck Friday night. 
The Southwest Carpenters Local 1390 wants you to find a fulfilling career in our community. In between the lines of clocking in and quitting time. But then the six string circus comes to town. Back has one timeout remaining, 5.05 to go in the half here. It's third down. Mitchell has a man. It's Mike Jones. He's right at the sticks. I think it's enough for a Tucson first. No, they're going to mark him short, Daryl. I figured they were marking short. I mean, Jackson did a great job of getting up against the wall. He was praying for that referee to throw the flag there. Because Mike is a, is a low to bring down. But. Four and a half minutes. They have Jones listed at 5'11", 210. That's being generous. He is a beast. Coach Griggs has to burn the Gladiators' second timeout here. We'll be right back. 4.20 on the clock. 28-22, Tucson. Gladiator, Gladiator, Gladiator. Fit to fight with the gods, I'm the giant slayer. Bone shaker, dominator. Freight train wrecking ball, I'm the Gladiator. to work let's get to work roadrunner realty and investments is a proud partner of your duke city gladiators big fourth down play coming up for tucson here to the end zone, it's incomplete. The target over there was Kerrigan, but he fired it over his head before the turnover on downs. That's a big stop by this Gladiator defense. Gets the Gladiators back the ball. Four minutes left here in, in, before the half. Chance really yeah, it is. for a methodical drive here. Get the two for one, Gladiators get it first in the third with Lakayo's legs having provided so many extra points already to this score. Just a six point Tucson lead. Seems like it should be more. And the way the Gladiators have been moving the ball thus far, they haven't tried to get it all in one play and not a lot of big plays in this ball game for this offense, but they have been moving the ball methodically down the field, controlling the time of possession. And of course, lakayo has been dynamic in the kicking game, but. The main thing is, other than his one interception, Javin has done a pretty good job of protecting the ball and finding the open receivers and getting them the ball. Drive will start at the eight for the Gladiators. Dents in motion. He's get sandwiched at the 20. My goodness. goodness. That's a hit. He is slow to get up, and you can't blame him. They're going to have to probably check him for a concussion. That was a shot there by Ben. Great job of hanging on to the ball. Going up and catching that ball in traffic, hanging on to it. Former Florida State receiver showing that he still has that seminal toughness in it. Sideline penalty there on Tucson as well. So another five yards will move the ball to midfield. Dent is awfully slow getting back into that huddle. Yeah, I think we're going to watch him, him some, pretty closely here yeah. on his next drive just to make sure. Get him some smelling salts. 
I mean, he's still shaking his head, trying to shake the cobwebs out. He got crunched from both sides, and he's going to be the motion man here on this to the right side with Sloan. They'll hand it to Carr. Carr got wrapped up at the point of attack. There's a flag after the plate. Two of them, as a matter of fact. And again, the way Harrow's arguing with the referees, it looks like it's going to be a... Yeah, Tucson has been uh, penalized a lot because they've been doing a lot of talking. It's a taunting penalty against Braden Utley, the defensive lineman from Baylor. That'll put the ball inside the 15 yard line here with three and a half minutes on the clock. Another costly penalty for the Sugar Skulls. And again, I want to say that's their second or third unsportsmanlike conduct here in this ball game. So these guys got to get their emotions under control. Yeah, Tucson just racking up penalty yards. Dangerous pass to Concliffe. That was ripe for an interception. Ball came out. They're going to blow it dead into the wall, I believe, as Concliffe is slow to get up. Lost the helmet on the play. I believe they blew that dead into the wall. I believe so. Again, like you said, that's a dangerous throw. Came pretty close to being intercepted. Concliffe slow to get up. Take another look, Daryl. Take us through this. Let's watch it there. It almost got tipped right there, but again, Concliffe catches it. And at this point, he's just trying to use that that frame 6'2", 240 pounds, and you guys can see there, he's, he's low to bring down, but. Yeah, it was his helmet that yeah. came off first, not the ball. Yeah, once his helmet came out, it looks like he may have took some contact, contact to the head when his helmet came off. And they're lying at that position as La Tyrone Laughinghouse is inactive this week. We'll take a timeout, come right back. I think it took a little bit of a shot, Daryl. You were right after that helmet came yeah. off. 304 and counting on the clock here. Dent still, I think, is a little woozy, to be honest, the way he was walking. There's a challenge flag down on the field now, so we'll have our first challenge. I'm curious what they're challenging here. Well, let's, let's find out. Tucson has challenged the previous play, stating the ball, the player lost the ball prior to being down by rule. Previous play will be under further review. So they're gonna challenge whether he was down or not. I can tell you right now, they're not gonna get a great angle at that. It was tough to see, but I think, like with you all, said earlier, Sebastian, the, with all that the traffic, helmet came off first. With all that traffic over there against the wall, it's hard to get a good enough angle to overturn that. So that this is a little bit of a gamble of a challenge. It did happen in front of their bench, though. We're looking at it here on the big screen. And again, the same thing we're seeing, you guys are seeing here at home. Yeah, like you said, it's a lot of traffic there, so it's going to be tough to try to overturn between, that. Between the bodies and it being against the wall, yeah. I mean, it's, I would almost think they're not going to get an angle to overturn this, which really the coaches, I think, have to know that. But let's see. See there, he's getting wrapped up. And once that's when all the bodies get there, and the ball comes around right around that time. It's that's the to tell. helmet that goes flying. And again, once the helmet comes off, that's when he hits the wall, and then the ball comes out. So that's a clear indication that the ball came out after he hit the wall. I was, since I couldn't see through all the bodies, I was just going by sound, and the ball came out after the whistle. I do know that. Right. This is, should be the best angle, but even this will be a little shielded. I think they're going to just have to go with what's on the field. 
Yeah, that's a, that's definitely a tough call. I don't think it's enough to, to overturn. There's another angle. This actually should be the best, but then more jerseys come in to block the angle here. Yeah, James Jackson is, is blocking that view, number nine right there. It's just tough to overturn something. You can't, you can't overturn what you don't concrete see. Concrete evidence of. Daryl, you uh, eavesdrop like you always do, okay? My eavesdrop is pretty good. I think it's going to stand. All right. Good work, Daryl. <laughs> Yeah, I just don't think there was enough there to, to overturn that. We'll go down for the announcement. But. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. The runner's helmet came off while he still had possession of the ball. By rule, the ball is dead immediately when the runner's helmet comes off. So that's an interesting... So Tucson will be there, charged their final timeout of this half. The official announced there was that by rule, when his helmet came off, the play is dead. So really, I guess it wouldn't have mattered if the exactly. ball came out then, right? Exactly. And once his helmet comes off, the ball is dead. Now at this point, you got to hope Concliffe is okay. I know he walked off the field pretty gingerly there. He took a shot to the head once his helmet came off. But like you mentioned, gladiators are, are pretty thin at the wide receiver position. And they're going to need his size and his presence here on, in the, on the field. 249 and counting till halftime. Dent in motion, as is Laquiviante Gonzalez. Dent is open in the front of the end zone, and he brings it in. And the loosest hips in the IFL are dancing in the end zone. Outstanding route by Greg Dent. Set it up like he was running the post across the field and stuck it back to the corner, and Javin delivered his best ball of the season. An absolute laser to Greg Dent for the touchdown here. Watch it, Derek. Greg did a great job of faking to the post, hitting it right to the corner, and you guys can see that was a very tight window for Javin to fit that ball in there, and he threw an absolute dime to Greg Dent for the touchdown. Lakayo will attempt the drop kick, and it's no good. The game is tied at 28. This is a true story. A client of the law firm of David C. Chavez, LLC, was tragically injured by a distracted truck driver. His medical bills, more than $5 million. and rising. They immediately began the investigation, hiring the best experts in the nation and filed the appropriate court action against a billion dollar corporation. His life will never be the same. However, within two years from the date of the collision, their client was fairly compensated for his catastrophic injuries and is on the road to recovery. The law firm of David C. Chavez, protecting those who don't have a voice. 505-865-9696. Welcome back to the Rio Rancho Event Center. We're tied at 28, under two minutes to go. Sebastian Noel with Daryl Stoneham. Lakayo's drop kick attempt, no good there. Let's see if he tries to deuce here. Gladiators turn the stop into points. Talk to Coach Griggs before the game about that. You know, about what his philosophy is with stops. Because a lot of coaches just say, hey, one stop a half and we should win a game. Exactly. He says, no, you know, we really need more than one stop a half. But see what Lakayo has in mind here. And that's something that the Gladiators haven't been doing thus far in the season is capitalizing on turnovers, even those turnover on downs. And that was a great job by Javin the lead the offense down to a touchdown. Deuce attempts no good. And the Skulls will get it from uh, midfield here. Now here with just under two minutes here before the half, this is going to be a Another big opportunity for the Gladiators defense to come up big here. If they're able to get a stop right before halftime and give the balls, give the ball back to the Gladiators coming out of halftime, that's where you can start to develop a lead, develop some momentum, and the confidence that you need, especially if your quarterback, Jack and Kilgo, to finish this game off and walk away with your first win of the season. Hey, 
and see if they can finally get to Mitchell. Again, with no Serta this week, uh, pass rush has been quiet. And this is again there, it's complete to McCall from the Ohio State University, <laughs> Daryl. Coach, get that Coach Back long. wanted me to emphasize that every time. I don't doubt he did, I'm not gonna lie. Coach Back has to wear a Michigan jersey though. And I'm holding him to that bet. His Buckeyes lost to my Wolverines the past two seasons in a row. This should bring us to the one minute warning here. So Gladiators defense trying to get one more stop before the half. We're at the one minute warning. There is one minute 28. remaining in this half. I think that beer she's holding is only four dollars tonight, Daryl. It's four dollar beer night. How much money did you bring for uh, halftime? <laughs> Mitchell has a man wide open in the middle of the field. It's Tate. Takes it inside the ten. Tucson's out of timeouts. Fifty point nine here. That was a great open field tackle by Bird there. Like you mentioned, Tucson is out of timeouts, so that was a great job of. Securing that tackle before. Uh, their unsuccessful challenge cost them their last time out. The handoff to Jones. The flag blew it dead, though. It was a false start. See if we get the call here. It looks like it's going to be a false start on the offense. Both teams looking for their first win of the season. Everyone up looking up at the San Diego Strike Force off to a 2 0 start in the Western Conference. Strike Force are off to a, a pretty dynamic start. So, huge credit to. Former Gladiator quarterback Nate Davis. Ball start, number 15, offense. Five yard penalty remains first down. Yeah, Nate was the This IFL penalty does include a 10 week. second subtraction. Nine Will you please reset the down. game clock to 26 this seconds? Is an so inside a minute, that false start requires a 10 second runoff, and Coach Back does not have a timeout to negate it, so they'll put 26 seconds on the clock here. That was a costly penalty. Not quite set for play yet. The clock will start on my signal. The clock will start here. Now the clock's moving. Remember, no Sugar Skulls timeout. Mitchell has some room, dumps it off to Mike Jones. I believe he was pushed into the wall before the touchdown. I know they're going to give him a touchdown. Wow. Did he get in again? I think, that, yeah, they gave him the touchdown on that. It's another rushing touchdown for gladiator killer Mike Jones. His look, ability. Can we, uh, let's see if we can have another look at that. It definitely looked like he hit the wall, but Mike's ability to be able to score and still keep that balance when he's right there against the wall. And just a little contact. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah he touchdown. never touched the wall. It's 
great balance. Coach Griggs is going to throw the challenge flag. He's going to lose it. But I guess, you know, with 10 seconds left, it doesn't matter. Exactly. Unless they see that wall moving. But from that angle, it did not look like Jones was touched. Let's take, unless he's... Unless he's challenging... The city is challenging the previous play, claiming there was an illegal forward pass. Okay. As the so he's not challenging the Mike Jones. Previous play will be under further review. What he is challenging is an illegal forward pass. It's a great challenge because it did look like Mitchell was beyond the line of scrimmage. Let's take a look here. That ball forward. Don't let that yellow line fool you. That's not our technology. That's a soccer line from indoor. So that's not our fox yellow line going across the screen. So the throwing motion starts before he crosses the line of scrimmage, and the ball is released after he crosses the line of scrimmage. But remember, so I just have to know the rule if, clarification on that. If any part of the body is at the line of scrimmage, it'd be all right, right? You see here, he's behind the line of scrimmage and begins the throwing motion. And when he releases the ball, right there, he's beyond the line of scrimmage. But now it's hard to it's be close. Let's see, Daryl. Were you eavesdropping at all or no? I couldn't. They did a great job this time. Upon further review, there is no legal forward pass. Quarterback was behind the line of scrimmage when he let go of the ball. Duke City will be charged the final timeout of this half. So now the Gladiators are out of challenges. If any part of the body remains in contact with the line of scrimmage, it's not an illegal forward pass. Okay. Well, then I, that was the correct part. You have to be entirely past the line of scrimmage. Here comes the extra point. It's good. 35, 28, Tucson. IBEW 611. Are you an electrician looking to join a community of highly skilled professionals? Look no further than IBEW 611. Our members receive competitive wages, comprehensive benefits, and ongoing training to stay ahead of industry advancements. Plus, we advocate for safe working conditions and fair treatment for all workers. Don't settle for less than what you deserve. Join the Electricians Union today and take control of your career. Visit IBEW.org. IBEW are supporters of the Duke City Gladiators. Ten seconds remaining here in the half. 35-28 in favor of Tucson. After the rushing touchdown, second of the night for Gladiator killer Mike Jones. We've just never had an answer for Mike Jones, Daryl. Never. No. And he's, he, I mean, just his balance. I mean, he uses that size to his, his, his advantage, but his balance and his vision sets him apart from a lot of running backs here in the IFL. Thomas is back there with 10 seconds remaining. Dents the up man at the 10. The Gladiators are out of timeouts as well. Thomas will field. This will give Kilgo a chance at a play with five seconds remaining in the half. I think you got about one play before you try to bring out Ernesto for the field goal. No timeouts. You got one shot in the end zone. And now, since it should be mentioned, if Ernesto does drop kick a field goal, that's four, four points. points. So yeah. he's been attempting drop kicks on the extra point conversions. Uh, an attempted drop or a, a successful drop kick on the field goal attempt would be four. But I think we can forget about that if Javin just sticks one in the end zone here. This will be the only play. And then either a Lakayo attempt or hopefully a touchdown, right? Let's see. It's definitely going to be tough to put one in the end zone. Obviously, the the entire defense is anticipating the deep ball here. Offensive line has to give them some time here. You don't want to get caught in bounce here, though. Flag on the play. This is against the offense. Remember, no timeouts to negate the runoff. 
But since the if clock the, wasn't... If, yeah, start, but, if there's a penalty offense, that requires a run Three men in motion at the same time. Five-yard penalty remains first down. Three men in motion. So, is that usually... Is that, does that come with the runoff or no? I, I guess not. No, the ball... The clock wasn't moving previously. So, yeah, they're going to put it back to five seconds. So, again, you got one shot here. You don't want to get caught in bounds. And, again, the pocket collapsed pretty early there. See if they give Javin some time here. He's going to go short right at Carr. Sticks it over the wall with 2.5. They might have another play here. No, they're not going to risk it. Here comes Lacayo. So Lacayo's on here. Think he tries a drop kick here or traditional field goal? This would be 28. At the, uh, this would be about a 36 yarder. That'd be a hard drop kick. I think you just go traditional here. Yeah, Kill goes out there to hold. If you bet the over today, you are smiling heading into halftime. I'll tell you that. Lakayo, the world's most interesting man, on for the field goal attempt. That took a deflection, I believe. It's no good. It's halftime here. If you take a look at head coach Dominic Bramante and the troops heading back to the locker room here. They trail it at the half, 35-28. Four12careers.com. Are you looking for a career that offers stability, growth, and job satisfaction? Consider joining UA Local 412. Our members receive industry-leading training, competitive wages, and benefits that support you and your family. Don't just find a job, start a career in the trades. Visit our website or call us now to learn more about how to become a member. UA Local 412. 412careers.com. McDonald's is committing $150 million in tuition assistance, education, and career advising programs to help more employees achieve their dreams. Dave & Buster's is the home of all Duke City Gladiator watch parties and their proud partners. Game time. The IFL and Build Your Base are back in your communities in 2024. Build Your Base has prepared our teams to bring fun and excitement to the youth in our communities along with priceless lessons about good nutrition and the importance of staying active. With Build Your Base, our goal is to instill healthy lifestyle principles early in life so they can carry these lessons with them as they grow. Learn more about Build Your Base at buildyourbase.org. With the increase in sales of fake pills on social media platforms, the fentanyl epidemic continues to grow, especially amongst high school students. It's now the leading cause of overdose. You know I'm here for you. If you need any help. Mom, I think I need help. Keep NM alive. It starts with a conversation.
I'm David C. Chavis. Just like you, we see terrible motorcycle, semi-truck, and car wrecks every day. We fight to win for you. I'm a top 10 nationally ranked injury attorney, but I'm still as local as red and green. Are you ready for Ram Truck Month at Malloy Ram in Los Lunas? With huge discounts and new trucks arriving daily, when you think Ram, think Malloy Ram in Los Lunas. MalloyCJDR.com. Paletta Bar Tramway. Our paletas are high quality pops and a delicious, healthy choice. Our refreshing flavors are the perfect treat for the summertime. Come and see us at 12501 Candelaria Road Northeast, Suite D. Sip means sit, Albuquerque's dog training experts. We offer in-home dog and puppy obedience training. Contact us at 505-916-1748 to schedule a free dog training evaluation. The Southwest Carpenters Local 1390 wants you to find a fulfilling career in our community. Call us at 505-266-8869 to find out more. Roadrunner Realty and Investments is a proud partner of your Duke City Gladiators.
This is a true story. A client of the law firm of David C. Chavez LLC was tragically injured by a distracted truck driver. His medical bills more than $5 million in rising. They immediately began the investigation, hiring the best experts in the nation and filed the appropriate court action against a billion dollar corporation. His life will never be the same. However, within two years from the date of the collision, their client was fairly compensated for his catastrophic injuries and is on the road to recovery. The law firm of David C. Chavez, protecting those who don't have a voice. 505-865-9696. IBEW 611. Are you an electrician looking to join a community of highly skilled professionals? Look no further than IBEW 611. Our members receive competitive wages, comprehensive benefits, and ongoing training to stay ahead of industry advancements. Plus, we advocate for safe working conditions and fair treatment for all workers. Don't settle for less than what you deserve. Join the Electricians Union today and take control of your career. Visit IBEW.org. IBEW are supporters of the Duke City Gladiators. 412careers.com. Are you looking for a career that offers stability, growth, and job satisfaction? Consider joining UA Local 412. Our members receive industry-leading training, competitive wages, and benefits that support you and your family. Don't just find a job, start a career in the trades. Visit our website or call us now to learn more about how to become a member. UA Local 412, 412careers.com. Maria Ramirez? Hi. Maria Ramirez. McDonald's is committing $150 million in tuition oh, assistance, oh, oh. education, and career advising programs Maria Ramirez. Maria Ramirez. to help more employees achieve their dreams. Dave & Buster's is the home of all Duke City Gladiator watch parties and their proud partners. Game time. The IFL and Build Your Base are back in your communities in 2024. Build Your Base has prepared our teams to bring fun and excitement okay. to the halftime score and I'm with Daryl Stone and Sebastian Noah. If we look at this stat sheet, I mean if you had the over tonight, you're loving it, right? Quarterback play has been good. Malik Mitchell, 9 of 11, 102 yards, two touchdowns. Javin Kilgo, 11 of 14, uh, three touchdowns, 86 yards, the one interception, obviously that hurts. Got to clean that up a little bit. We talked about rushing yards and the Gladiators have to get the rushing game going. They have 27 rushing yards in two combined games coming in. Well, they got a lot more than that in this game. So, you know, that part, they checked the box there. The rushing yards are there. Uh, time of possession favors the Gladiators. This feels like a game that the Gladiators could, could maybe steal here in the second half. They get the ball first, Daryl. Exactly, and you talk about all the positive the Gladiators have been doing on offense. It's, it's a complete 180. I mean, the rushing attack is great. The passing attack, other than the one interception, has been good. But the Gladiators' strong corner, this whole team, which has been the defense thus far in the season, has been the, the part of this team that has struggled thus far in the ball game. So they and, have to make those adjustments. And, you know, there's no sugarcoating it. They missed Jason Serta out there. Of course. Uh, they, they have not been able to replace his presence in the middle of the field at that Mike linebacker position. Um, the leading tackler has been Hart. And, of course, that's up front on the line. So... I mean, they're probably going to need another stop in the second half, right? Where does it come from? I think it's going to be in the turnover part of the ball game. These guys are going to have to find a way to create a turnover, and that's going to start with getting pressure on Mitchell. They haven't been able to, they haven't been able to get a lot of pressure on Mitchell thus far in the ball game, so they're going to have to clean that up, get some pressure on him, force him to throw some errant balls, and create some turnovers. Coach Griggs and company they have been stressing this entire second quarter hey they're holding mcdowell they have called for a hold on almost every play 
saying they're holding McDowell. And on quite a few of them, I think they've had a little bit of a case. I know Coach Griggs is going to plead that case again with the referees at halftime as he comes out because McDowell's so tough to contain, right? Exactly. I mean, he's so big. He's so strong and physical at 6'7". But those holding calls come a lot when Mitchell escapes the pocket and he's able to use his legs to create yardage down the field. That's when those holding penalties start to come, and the referee's going to have to spot that. Big thing tonight, though, red zone. Four for four in the red zone. They punched it in every time. That's huge for the Gladiators because Tucson is traditionally a team that's excellent in the red zone with Mike Jones. And that's a big part of that is no turnovers in the red zone. A lot of times and thus far in the season, Javin has thrown the ball over, turned the ball over in costly situations, red zones, big times in the ball game. But he's cleared those up. That one, that one interception was pretty costly, but it wasn't in a crucial point in the ball game. It wasn't in the red zone. And it's something that he's cleared up because he's followed that with three interceptions, with three touchdowns. Both teams looking for their first win of the season. Let's see what happens. Second half, Coach Back has never lost to the Gladiators. Gladiators looking for their first win at home before the bye. Second half, when you get back. Our communities along with priceless lessons about good nutrition and the importance of staying active. With Build Your Base, our goal is to instill healthy lifestyle principles early in life so they can carry these lessons with them as they grow. Learn more about Build Your Base at buildyourbase.org. With the increase in sales of fake pills on social media platforms, the fentanyl epidemic continues to grow, especially amongst high school students. It's now the leading cause of overdose. You know I'm here for you. If you need any help. Mom, I think I need help. Keep NM alive. It starts with a conversation. I'm David C. Chavis. Just like you, we see terrible motorcycle, semi-truck, and car wrecks every day. We fight to win for you. I'm a top 10 nationally ranked injury attorney, but I'm still as local as red and green. Are you ready for Ram Truck Month at Malloy Ram in Los Lunas? With huge discounts and new trucks arriving daily when you think Ram, think Malloy Ram in Los Lunas. MalloyCJDR.com. Paletta Bar Tramway. Our palettas are high quality pops and a delicious, healthy choice. Our refreshing flavors are the perfect treat for the summertime. Come and see us at 12501 Candelaria Road Northeast, Suite D. Sip means 
sit, Albuquerque's dog training experts. We offer in-home dog and puppy obedience training. Contact us at 505-916-1748 to schedule a free dog training evaluation. The Southwest Carpenters Local 1390 wants you to find a fulfilling career in our community. Call us at 505-266-8869 to find out more. event center for the second half Sebastian well with Daryl Stoneham gladiators will get the football first so this becomes a very important opening possession of the half DC huge let's see what what type of adjustments or reinforcements the gladiators made here at the halftime I don't think too many adjustments need to be made just clear up that one interception by Kilgo but it, like I said he followed that interception with three three touchdowns so I would say just continue to do what you're doing, continue to, to use that run game to your advantage to calm those nerves. And, and look for that one stop. Exactly. And they blew this one dead before the play, I believe. Not sure why. Delay a game, kicking team. They kicked the ball before it was made ready for play. That five-yard penalty would be placed in the bank to be enforced following the free kick. So delay a game, they kicked the ball before it was ready for play. Five yards in the bank here will add to this return. Penalties have been an issue that Billy Back is going to have to <laughs> address this week, right? And if we know Billy Back, he's definitely going to do so this week. Eight, eight penalties for 72 yards in that first half for Tucson. And a lot of them have been unsportsmanlike conduct penalties, which, which has cost his team 15 yards of pop with that automatic first down. So, got to clear these these penalties up. They'll go on the ground again. High hop through Dent, right to Thomas. Thomas still on his feet. Thomas, nothing but Green in front, and he is in. Forget the bank. Forget the five yards. Touchdown, Gladiators. Outstanding job. Great oh, cut that's there. The flag on the play. At the end, did that come at the end after? I hope that's just for a taunt. 
Watch the cut that sprung him here. Great job of fielding that off the tip by Dent. Offside, number two, kicky team. That penalty is declined. Result of the play is a touchdown. It was a Tucson penalty. So go ahead, Gerald. I mean, it's just a great cut off, off the initial tackler there. Did a great job of reading and setting that cut up. Made the proper plant and took that ball to the end zone. Outstanding job. Great momentum booster to come out of the halftime here for the Gladiators. So Thomas gets on the board here. And let's see what Lakayo has in mind here. We'll go for the drop kick again here. Uh, this would give Duke City the lead. And we saw him practice this quite a bit here before the half or at the half. Yeah, he was out here early. And it's wide left. It's no good. And it'll be a one point lead for Tucson. Let's get to work. Let's get to work. Roadrunner Realty and Investments is a proud partner of your Duke City Gladiators. Welcome back to the event center here. As Lakayo's kick was no good, it's 35 34 in favor of Tucson. Ernesto was 5 for 5 on those drop kicks last week. They've proven to be a little more difficult today. Darryl. And they're getting a lot more pressure on them. That's the thing. I mean, that last week when he was able to do all those drop kicks, it was the first time in the season he attempted them, and he wasn't getting a lot of pressure. This week, Tucson is putting a little bit of pressure and a little bit of rush on them. It's causing some errant kicks there. That one will go through the end zone just wide right. Bring it back out to midfield. And I did, I was listening into offensive coordinator Landrick Brody was right in front of us here and he was asking I thought we were kicking regular extra points the second half so maybe not everyone on the same page there and it's tough because Lakayo is so dynamic at those again he's coming off of special teams player of the week making five consecutive so it's hard to free kick went out of bounds I'm in all, the air I'm, by I'm, rolling the ball to the 25 to calling the five yard penalty balls brought back to the 20 it is so a I first down Tucson in the drop kicks and the deuces as well because Lakayo is normally money. Mitchell, back to work. Now I did see, I did hear Coach Griggs saying that I, I called that. So somebody called for that two point drop kick. Mitchell. Tate and Claiborne getting into it again. And the flag came out. It was right in front of us here. It did. Let's see what they. Uh, usually they get the guy reacting, right? Exactly. Let's see. Two, they After got the here. play, sportsmanlike conduct number 23, defense. A 15 yard penalty no, results in an automatic first to down. Trayvon Claiborne. Freddie's arguing that the, the initial contact. But like you said, they're always going to catch the, the reaction. They're not going to not going to catch the initiator typically. I was reading coach's lips. He said you drew that flag before it even happened. You're anticipating. Mitchell in gladiator territory now. Has some time and a wide open receiver in the middle of the field. Kerrigan. With all his receptions, he's always been open tonight. I don't think he's caught one in traffic. He's always been pretty clear. And they're typically in the middle of the field as well. First and goal at the three. And in that middle of the field is where Jason Serter would normally be. He was the leading receiver for them. Three catches for 38 yards. First down. They're in Mike Jones territory right now, that's for sure. They'll 
Mitchell fake to Jones. Mitchell slips in. Touchdown, Tucson. He saw a little hole and he burst it through. It's a big quarterback. You see it right there. Look, I mean that that's you can see why he has all those rushing touchdowns, Daryl. He's got some good size, 6'4", 210, but that's the that's that's the Mike Jones effect there. Watch it, watch everyone go with the fake with Mike Jones. I mean, you have the entire defense even hesitate because like you said, that's Mike Jones territory and that opened up a lot of rushing lanes. You have to respect it, right? All Mitchell had to do was pick one, which he did. Easy touchdown there for the Sugar Scores. Extra points, good. 12-29 remaining here in the third. 42-34, Tucson. Let's get to work. Let's get to work. Roadrunner Realty and Investments is a proud partner of your Duke City Gladiators. This is a true story. A client. Welcome back to the Rio Rancho Event Center. Sebastian Oil with Daryl Stoneham, 42-34. So Tucson answers in a big way. Offensively, they look good tonight. They have, and Mitchell's been lights out thus far in the ball game, using his legs and his arms to carve up this normally dominant thus far in the season gladiator defense. So it's a different defense without Jason Serta tonight, that's for sure. But this is a potent rushing attack, with especially when they get in the red zone with Jones and Mitchell. Those two are definitely a great one-two punch. It's a returnable ball for Thomas. Tripped up across the 10. He was tripped up. Good special teams play there by Mike Kerrigan. Kevin Kilgore will go back to work here. This is one of those games, though, where Javin's <coughs> going to be tested. He's going to have to keep scoring. Turnovers. A turnover will lose this game here in the second half, I believe. Exactly. It's the, the team who's going to make the first mistake or that defense that gets the first stop here. But like you said, Javin hasn't been in these type of situations thus far in the ball game where he's in a, a shootout. And thus far, he's been able to rely on, on his defense to get a, a stop or create some type of turnover. But his defense is lagging here today, and he has to pick up the slack and see if he's able to do so. A gift to Carr. He gets a nice burst on first down. Gain of six on a play for Jeff Carr, the running back out of Oklahoma State. Now the over-under was 85 and a half. And we're almost there. Again, it's great to see how great the running game has been thus far. I mean, like you said, 29 total yards last week. And yeah, 27 yards in two games. In two games. That's not going to get it done. Well, it's coming at us. Of course, we are not eligible receivers, so that's <laughs> incomplete. I was hesitant to catch that. I noticed that. I you, thought about you it. You didn't even come over here towards me. You went the other way. I had nachos at halftime. Did so you? my hands, they had cheese all over. Oh. You know, it's, that's, I didn't want to mess up the game. You know, we're on this side of the wall, Daryl. You can't catch it. <laughs> it's not my job title anymore. No, no. Not, not anymore. Not anymore. Traded the helmet for a headset. Third down and six. Or beg your pardon, third and five. Flag on the play. Kilgo firing. Has a man. Tipped and incomplete. There are flags everywhere. Let's see what the call here. Reverse look at this one, though. No, that didn't hit a hand. What did that hit? Illegal that defense. Hit the helmet? Yeah, Number 10. Like he bounced off his helmet. Not down in his stance the at the snap. That is a five-yard penalty. That results in a first down. It's a gladiator first oh, down as we were talking over our, the referee here. Apologize. It's a two-side penalty for a first. Another illegal defense by the Sugar Skulls. Nonetheless, it gives Javin a fresh set of, fresh set of down here.
Dent and Sloan in motion. Javins in trouble. Throws it into the seats and roughing the passers coming out against Travaris Farrell. And Kilgo is slow to get up. I think they're going to get Tucson on a roughing the passer. He drove the quarterback down into the ground. They might call a roughing the passer there. Watch after Kilgo releases his ball. He gets driven into the ground by Farrell. Right there. Oh, that's not legal? <laughs> We're adopting NFL rules. Here we here. go. Personal foul. Roughing the passer. Number seven, defense. 15 yard penalty. Automatic. First down. Another gladiator first. Both first downs on this drive have come via the penalty. And again, you got to protect the quarterback. I know bang bang calls, you typically let those go, but he could have pulled up after that ball was released. I think that's why the referees called the, the penalty. He had the, the option to pull up and yeah. he decided to drive him into the ground. So that, that warrants a, a flag. Sometimes you just have to pull up, Daryl. <laughs> and he didn't. And I think they're over 100 yards in oh, penalty easy. yards. Yeah, they definitely are over 100 yards. And if you Gladiators look close back, to, that yeah. doesn't make him happy. Gladiators have to take advantage, though. Another flag. This one's a false start. False start. Number 75, 15 offense, yards on the previous penalty. five yard penalty, penalty remains first down. Give five yards of it back with a false start here. A lot of penalties this game. A ton. Teams combined for 12 of them for over 100 yards in the first half. Eight of them, though, came from Tucson. Well, when your uniforms are yellow, you're going <laughs> to get a lot of flags. <laughs> First down here. First 15 after the penalty. Javin will keep this one himself. Into the wall here. A little pushing and shoving with Robert Sheffield. Brings up a second down. Ball's inside the 15 yard line. Something we don't see Jab do that we know he's capable of doing, and that's using his legs to escape the pocket and create, using his athleticism in the run game. He has the option to do that a lot more, and I think Coach Offensive Coordinator Landry Brody would, would, would agree that he would like to see Jab run and use his legs a lot more. He's an athletic guy. Come back, come back, come back. Fires incomplete. That's incomplete. One of our camera guys over there. I think he made it out alive. He's doing pretty yeah, good. Yeah, no, you know, Ricky Hunter over there ready to catch a souvenir. But Javis getting a lot of time here. His offensive line is doing a great job. His receivers are, are doing a pretty good job finding the holes in the zones. This is when Tucson reverts back to that man coverage is when they struggle to create a little bit of separation down the field, which makes it a, a, a much tougher throw for Kilgo. But he's he's threaded the needle quite this a will, bit here today. This will bring up a third down. Gladiators were three for three on third down in the first half. Kilgo looking, still looking, fires into the end zone, through the end zone incomplete. No chance for LaQuiviante Gonzalez to bring that one in. He's, quite, he's fired quite a few of those, just uncatchable through the end zone. He has, and the difference here in the second half is a lot of his throws were five yard completions, 10 yard completions. Now he's coming out trying to drive the ball 15, 20 yards down the field. And that's in, towards the strong suit of this Tucson Sugar Skull defense. I mean, they, they thrive on those deep balls and, and they sit in the, the zones waiting for him. So continue to give what, take what the defense gives you. That'll bring Ernesto Lacayo, IFL Special Teams Player of the Week on for the Traditional field goal attempt here. Kill goes the holder. Good snap. Good hold. Lakayo's kick is right down Broadway. Field goal's good for the Gladiators with 7.03 remaining in the third. It's Tucson 42, Duke City 37.
Sebastian Oh back with Daryl Stoneham, 7.03 remaining, 42-37. It's a tight one. The over's going to hit real soon. As Lakayo gets set to kick here. Defense thinks something might be in the works here. They are, might be expecting a little trickeration here, Daryl. No. See. It's a script. Takes the high hop. Fielded by McCall. McCall's brought down just past the 15-yard line. That's where Mitchell will go back to work. Great kick coverage by the Gladiators. But this defense has to get a stop here. I mean, this is it's not do or die right just yet. But well, only I mean, interception of the season belongs to Trayvon Claiborne. It'd be huge to add another one here. But still, they still have not got any pressure on Mitchell. Not at all. So you look. To you have to wonder if McDowell. I mean, yeah, I know Coach Griggs thinks they're holding McDowell, but I wonder if he's not 100 percent because usually he gets to the quarterback. And again, uh, got to give a lot of credit to the Tucson offensive line. I mean, these guys are doing a great job of neutralizing the, the Gladiators' rush, pass rush. Sidearm throw to Tate's complete as he's driven under the wall for a short gain. Yeah, that big fellow that's been opposite of McDowell has been Brandon N Nicholson, 6'4", 314. He's been up for the task. He's done a pretty good job thus far. Brings up a second and four. But whether it's a turnover on downs or, or, or forcing some type of turnover, defense has to step up here. Now I look for the secondary. I, mean, I know they're, they're tasked with a tough job of covering for longer than what they're used to, but they're going to have to step up and pick up the slack. Mike Jones up the middle for a first down for Tucson. For Mike to be as dominant as he has for this long, I mean, how long has he been a dominant force in the IFL? Yeah, he's, he's been special. Franchise type of guy, right? Type, type of guy that you know is coming back every year. He's the exactly. top priority in the offseason. Make sure he's happy. Kind of guy you can build a team around. Mitchell, huge hole for Mitchell. Coach Back only has two veterans on the active roster this week, so it's a young team, Daryl. It is. But that's a, you know that the veteran that's coming back every year, at least you want him back every year, is that guy, Mike Jones. He, he's the pillar of your, your offense. I mean, as long as you, you build some type of offensive line around him and give him, well, and you know, give him some help. I mean, I don't have to tell you when, you, when you have a franchise guy like that and he comes back every year, community knows him he puts butts in seats exactly he puts touchdowns on the board right like it's a win-win Mitchell back to pass that was all day now McDowell excuse me Hart still able to uncork one to Jones they're gonna blow it dead into the wall Hart was coming on the pressure and he dumped it off to Mike Jones great job by Hart I mean he was on the spy initially didn't blitz did a great job of sp spying on Mitchell right there. Decided to commit, and Claiborne did a great job of being right there. I mean, the referee kind of took a small shot there, but great job by Claiborne of being right there, and making the play on a ball carry. They have Hart playing that Jason Serta's Mike linebacker position right now, and they put Isaiah Bean in on the on the front defensive line. And that's not It's been easy. a rotating cast back there in Serta's position. It has. Remember, no Byron Cooper, no Dedarren Primes. All those previous year's options are not with the team anymore. So there was Hart on the stop as he stopped Mitchell. And Hart's done a great job. I mean, it's not an easy task when you're, you have to spy on a dynamic quarterback like Mitchell, some, a guy who can pick you apart with his arm and his legs. But he's done a great job. Look at Billy back there on your screen with Malik Mitchell. Coach Back changed his shoes at halftime, Daryl. He was wearing yellow shoes in the first half. He's got red ones on. I wonder if he's superstitious. There's got to be a story behind that, right? <laughs> we noticed the details here, Billy. We noticed the details. Mitchell. Pressure coming. Released it. Open man in the end zone. And it's caught on a touchdown for C.J. Tate. 
Mitchell did a great job of standing in the pocket, knowing he's about to take a shot and delivered an accurate ball down the field, an absolute laser for a touchdown. It's a pretty good job by the Gladiators getting pressure here. Watch McDowell gets a little late pressure right there. Mitchell knows he's going to take a shot from McDowell and delivers a great ball to take. Easy touchdown there for, for the Sugar Skulls. Now to add the extra point. up and it is good. It's a 12 point Tucson lead. This is a true story. A client of the law firm of David C. Chavez LLC was tragically injured by a distracted truck driver. His medical bills more than $5 million in rising. They immediately began the investigation, hiring the best experts in the nation and filed the appropriate court action against a billion dollar corporation. His life will never be the same. However, within two years from the date of the collision, their client was fairly compensated for his catastrophic injuries and is on the road to recovery. The law firm of David C. Chavez, protecting those who don't have a voice. 505-865-9696. IBEW 611. Are you an electrician looking to join a community of highly skilled professionals? Look no further than IBEW 611. Our members receive competitive wages, comprehensive benefits, and ongoing training to stay ahead of industry advancements. Plus, we advocate for safe working conditions and fair treatment for all workers. Don't settle for less than what you deserve. Join the Electricians Union today and take control of your career. Visit IBEW.org. IBEW are supporters of the Duke City Gladiators. 412careers.com Are you looking for a career that offers stability, growth, and job satisfaction? Consider joining UA Local 412. Our members receive industry-leading training, competitive wages, and benefits that support you and your family. Don't just find a job, start a career in the trades. Visit our website or call us now to learn more about how to become a member. UA Local 412, 412careers.com. Back with Daryl Stoneham, I'm Sebastian Noel. Three rushing touchdowns, three passing touchdowns for Malik Mitchell. He went for four on the ground in week one. He's putting on a show tonight, Daryl. He's been dynamic here in this ball game. Rushing touchdowns, passing touchdowns, delivering accurate balls. I mean, standing in the face of pressure there. I mean, he's had an outstanding game. And with Nate Davis on a bye this week, dare I say he would be an early, uh, early contender for Offensive Player of the Week if he keeps this up. He has. And the Gladiators are sorely missing Jason Soto out here today. He's out with, with an injury, but Talking to Coach Bramante before the game. There you look at Mitchell. Six touchdowns already, as we mentioned. I was talking to Coach Bramante. He's hoping the rest this week plus the bye and maybe a little more rest and to practice the following week would have him healthy for the remainder of the season. That's the guy you have to have out there. If not, uh, they're going to be scouring the free agent list for a Mike linebacker this week, I would assume. Deep. But we talked about the Gladiators needing to get pressure on Mitchell, and Jason Serter is the guy that normally creates that pressure and is that captain and that leader here for the defense. And he's just an animal to the quarterback, right? He I is, mean, man. And he's leading the team in most defensive categories, so that's, you know, it's not just a leader, it's does everything for this team. He, he the one man pass rush. He, in his two games, he had 13 and a half tackles, two of them for loss. So usually that's a one man pass rush. Now it, where does it come from? And again, his presence typically op opens up lanes for the defensive lineman as well. We'll give it to Carr. Gain of one or two on the play. So he was brought down by Utley. Went right over the top of the left side of the offensive line, and Jeremy Martin bring up actually a, four, a fortuitous spot to bring up a second and seven. James Jackson is a little shaken up. DB for the Sugar Skulls. He's out on this play. I see if the the Gladiators try to 
exploit his replacement here. Kill goal. There's a flag on the play. It's incomplete. There's another one. So there's a pass interference as that was intended for Sloan. They're going to get Phelps on the PI, but there was another flag that came out first. So these might offset. Well, it looked like a possible false start on the defense before the play. But we know the second flag was for sure a pass interference. Let's check if they're both against Tucson. Laquiviante Gonzalez signaling it's going that way, boys. Let's go down for the announcement. There is no foul for illegal defense. However, defensive pass interference, number 21. Ball be placed in the spot of the foul. That is an automatic first down. So they got the wrong number on that, but it was defensive pass interference. They picked up the flag for illegal defense. Gladiators takes advantage of the penalty here. Ball will be spotted at the 15-yard line. That was a great job by Gonzalez. So coming back to the ball and drawing that contact for the referees to call defensive pass interference. That was, I know the graphic was on the Gladiator side, but that was the 11th accepted penalty for 111 yards. Those were Tucson penalty oh. yards. So. Kilgo looking, gets rid of it. It's incomplete. And again, great coverage there by the Sugar Skulls, but the Gladiator defense is, I mean, the Gladiator receivers are running the routes that are drawn up on paper. I mean, sometimes you have to run that route, but you have to run it based off the, the defensive coverage that you're seeing. Mix up your routes in the, in, in the, in the middle of your route running. I mean, stair step some receivers to draw some type of separation. Use more rub routes to create some separation. If they're struggling to create it manually, then call some plays where you get those natural picks and those natural rubs to create separation. Clock moving under 30 seconds to play. Don't go looking. Fires. It's tipped. Good coverage over there. And a good defensive play by Phelps. And again, Kilgo's trying to drive the ball downfield. We talk about Mitchell's success that he's had thus far in the ball game, throwing the ball. A lot of them have been wide open in the middle of the field, sitting, finding the hole in his own by his wide receiver, Kerrigan, for five, six, maybe ten yards here and there. Gladiators need to continue to, to adopt that same mold. That It'll is be the a end third of the down third play quarter. when we come back to start the fourth quarter. 49-37, Tucson. 412careers.com. Are you looking for a career that offers stability, growth, and job satisfaction? Consider joining UA Local 412. Our members receive industry-leading training, competitive wages, and benefits that support you and your family. Don't just find a job, start a career in the trades. Visit our website or call us now to learn more about how to become a member. UA Local 412, 412careers.com. Four Twelve Careers dot com. Are you looking for a career that offers the food? Realty and Investments is a proud partner of your Duke City Gladiators.
This is a true story. A client of the law firm of David C. Chavez LLC was tragically injured by a distracted truck driver. His medical bills more than $5 million in rising. They immediately began the investigation, hiring the best experts in the nation and filed the appropriate court action against a billion dollar corporation. His life will never be the same. However, within two years from the date of the collision, their client was fairly compensated for his catastrophic injuries and is on the road to recovery. The law firm of David C. Chavez, protecting those who don't have a voice. 505-865-9696. IBEW 611. Are you an electrician looking to join a community of highly skilled professionals? Look no further than IBEW 611. Our members receive competitive wages, comprehensive benefits, and ongoing training to stay ahead of industry advancements. Plus, we advocate for safe working conditions and fair treatment for all workers. Don't settle for less than what you deserve. Third down to start the fourth quarter here for the Gladiators. They were perfect on third down conversions in the first half. It's a big third down. I would, I would think as long as maybe the Gladiators pick up some yards here, this might be a possible fourth down, go for it type of situation here. Kill go back to pass. Flushed out of the pocket, throws against the body. And it is incomplete. Intended for Dent, it brings up fourth. Decision time for Landrick Brody, and here comes Lakayo. You can tell the offense wanted to stay out there. Yeah, if you don't, if you wind up with no points here on this drive, it puts a lot of pressure on your defense. Take a look at the offensive yards for both teams. 144 yards of offense for the Gladiators to 190 for Tucson. The defense has already been struggling thus far in the ball game, so walking away here so with no points put a lot of pressure on them. If you go for a field goal here, you almost need a deuce on top of it to make it worth it, right? Exactly. Let's see. They desperately need Lakayo here on this. Lakayo's kick is through. Boy, did that have some leg behind it. Field goal's good. It makes it 49-40. We'll see. What do you think here, Daryl? You think uh, the, the deuce has to be coming here, doesn't it? Oh, yeah, it definitely. It has to go for the deuce. Hit one here. That A deuce would make it 49-42. Brings it down to a seven-point ball game. It puts you right in, back in that position as if you score it because you don't want it to be a two-possession ball game. Again, that puts a lot of pressure on your defense to make a stop, and that's pressure that, I mean, they haven't answered thus far in the game. They've been struggling quite a bit here today. So those were a big three points by Lakayo. Let's see if he can nail the deuce here. They were also a big, you know, the over has hit, so we're at 89 points, so. Hey, there you go. If I were a big man, already I'd hit. Be. Yeah. Unfortunately, Daryl and I are residents of the state of New Mexico, so we cannot partake in such activities. But for those of you that do, congratulations. Tucson is covering their four and a half point spread at the moment. Now right, let's see what Lakayo wants to do here. If everyone expecting a deuce, you try an onside kick here though. That's another, yeah. there are a lot of options on the table. And Lakayo can execute almost all of them. I definitely think you go for the deuce here. See what Lakayo does. He does. Go for the deuce, and it's good. Lakayo adds the deuce. The IFL Special Teams Player of the Week, and the most interesting man in the world, comes through again. He's clutch, I can tell you that. He may miss it. Free kick is good for a deuce. Multi place at the five yard line. First down, Tucson. You know, Ernesto once went to Sadie's, and the waitress asked the green and red chili if they want Ernesto. <laughs> that makes the score. It's a New Mexico joke, guys. Yeah, you it's a local a thing, yeah. You it's gotta a be a resident here, though. <laughs> See, I, but I made that one myself. I made that one up myself. I didn't go with the, the previous ones. That was a homegrown joke. 49. 42 the score after the deuce. And you get you get 
Tucson backed up. So now if the defense can complement this even more, huge. Pressure. Oh, that ball was tipped. It's a tip ball, falls incomplete. They were close to getting to Mitchell. It's a great job of getting pressure on the quarterback. That was an opportune moment and opportunity for a turnover on an interception. But those are the type of things that happen when you get pressure on the quarterback. You get those tip balls, you get those wobbly balls from the from the hit that the quarterback took before you know throwing the ball. So got to continue to get pressure on the quarterback and that helps create the turnovers that the gladiators are going to need. Fired and complete up the middle for McCall. Great job by McCall going up and getting that ball. I thought it was going to be a little bit over a throwing over his head. I mean, McCall's six foot 190. I think six foot's being generous there, but he did a great job of going up and getting that football out of the air. Still 12 and a half minutes and eternity left in this high scoring shootout here. Flip to Mike Jones, running on the left side. Good chunk there for Big Mike as he's finally pushed into the dasher. But how many times have we seen Mike Jones tackled? Even when the ball is ruled dead, he is up. He's on his feet. I mean, it's, he's tough to bring down. He's a load to bring down. And he, if he gets tackled, he always falls forward. I know he's had a pretty good game rushing the ball here today, but I'd like to know his yards after contact because that's the bulk of his yards on his carries. Second and five, Mitchell still able to evade. He's just so hard to get down. He's so quick. He's huge. Slow to get up now, Isaiah Bean. He's clutching at a knee. Again, very light at that position. No Serta. They move Bean to the defensive line. Solomon Jackson has gotten some snaps at the Mike linebacker position, but he's definitely holding that knee. We'll take the injury timeout and come right back. 412careers.com Are you looking for a career that offers stability, growth, and job satisfaction? Consider joining UA Local 412. Our members receive industry-leading training, competitive wages, and benefits that support you and your family. Don't just find a job, start a career in the trades. Visit our website or call us now to learn more about how to become a member. UA Local 412. 412careers.com To help more employees achieve their dreams. While we were in commercial break, Coach Back is going to challenge that there was an illegal twist on that play. So they're going to look at that here. Remember, an illegal twist would be any kind of stunting by the uh, defensive line. You pretty much have to stay engaged with the man directly in front of you. So that's what we'll be looking for on the replay. Which back lost the challenge in the first half. We'll keep an eye on the three defensive linemen for the Gladiators here. They have to stay engaged with their man. Can't be any stunting or twisting. Yeah, definitely no illegal twist there. That was the previous play, I believe. I think this might be a quick, unless we're looking at the, if we're looking at the right play, this is gonna, should be a 
a quick decision here by the referees. Here we go. Well, this is the right play. Yeah, I believe they're looking at the scramble there. Okay, yeah. Maybe. I don't. I'd have to get clarification. They stayed, on the he rule. stayed. I mean, yes, they did cross, but they stayed engaged with their man. I believe. I don't. Let's one more look. Watch the watch the gladiator play that ends up pursuing the quarterback. Yeah, it looks like he he's still engaged with his man there, isn't he, Daryl? Right, and then he more so got blocked into a twist. It wasn't right. a natural twist. Yeah, and, and watch it again. Yeah, he kind of gets blocked into a twist. Yeah, because the, he got the other man got blocked that way, and everyone's still engaged with their man on that play. So yeah, that'll be interesting. Let's see what the referees, what the officials make call. Watch here. it again here. By rule, it, though, it might be a twist. If my eavesdropping is is correct here. It's, they're going to call the twist. So They're even though he got pushed twist. into it by a rule, I think that we might still have a we might still have an illegal twist here. Let's yeah. go, we'll go down for the announcement. And I'm a pretty good eavesdropper. Are you? Between my, my eavesdropping and your lip reading, man, we're pretty good. Right? Upon further review, there was an illegal twist on the play. Illegal twist, number 42, defense. That is a five-yard penalty and does come with an automatic first down. So you get an injured player on the play and an illegal twist, which adds five yards. And then really the other thing that happened is McDowell came really close to a penalty because he was going at it with that official during the entire replay. He's been frustrated tonight because him and Coach Griggs have felt that he's been being held all night long. And he has a, he has a case for that as well. I mean, it's been quite a few times where Mitchell escapes the pocket. And, Mc, and McDowell is, is hell, so I understand his frustration, but you can't let that boil over into a costly penalty that'll cost your team 15 yards and an automatic first down, or automatic first down. Mitchell escapes, has some room and some wheels. And once he gets going, you're not going to bring him down. No. All the way inside the five. First down, first and goal for Tucson. Coach Billy Back is pumped up on the Tucson sideline right now. And again, that's what makes him so elusive and so dynamic. Even when the Gladiators do a great job of getting pressure on the quarterback, he finds a way to escape and turn what could have been a, a great defensive stop by the Gladiators into a 15-yard game for him. Watch it. Great pressure. McDowell to just loses containment there, and Mitchell, Mitchell does the rest by picking up you know, a big chunk of yards with his legs there. Outstanding play by Mitchell to pick up that first down. Coach Back is going to have to burn a timeout. He's not happy about it. I think they got the timeout. Let's see. Maybe not. Is it worth it at this point? I, I would just take the five yards. I You're in the so. red zone, right? Especially when you have a guy like Mike Jones back there. You might as well save your timeout. In a close game like this, then you might need it Let's down see. the road. Delay a game. Offense. They will. Five yard penalty remains first down. Back him up five on the delay a game. Give it to Mike Jones. Stiff arm, but he can't get around Claiborne into the wall shy of the five. Great job by Claiborne, not losing containment there. Usually you eat a stiff arm from Big Mike, he yeah. gets around you. <laughs> exactly. 
Claiborne did a good job of holding his ground. And Claiborne's not a little guy as well. He's 6'2", 182 pounds. So he's got some size on him. The size on him too. He did a great job of using that to force Mike Jones into the wall. You see Mitchell and Jones standing next to each other. You see why they're so effective. I mean, Mitchell's every big as big as Jones. Mitchell fakes, fires incomplete. Jones with the drop and then a flag came out. Did they hit Mitchell late? I think they did. I don't know. That's a tough call. That's a tough call to make here in this situation. Hart. I mean, Mitchell was pumping the ball. He was escaping out of the pocket. He was a run threat. Was there more than two pumps? I don't think that's allowed. <laughs> we'll get a replay look at it here. Personal foul, roughing the passer, number 19. Defense. Yeah, that's a tough call to make. Comes to be enforced half the distance to the goal. Automatic, first down. That's an oh, easy yeah. call to make. Yeah, that's an easy Darryl, call. what are you talking about? That's an easy The guy call. lets go of the ball, and three seconds later, you, you push him with two yeah. hands in the back? That's a, that's a boneheaded penalty there. you got to be smarter than that. That's the easiest call they've had all night. Mitchell, right on the doorsteps here. Fake to Mike Jones, Waltz is in, untouched. Rushing touchdown number four for Malik Mitchell. He's totaled seven in the game. Take us through the replay. I mean, this is what the, he's been effective at all game long. That zone read, a lot of the defense goes with Mike Jones on the fake because he is Mike Jones and he's dynamic in the red zone. We have a, a one-two punch and a one-two combination like that in the backfield. It's easy to, to pick up those, those rushing touchdowns in the red zone like they did just now. An extra point is good. McDowell got through there, just couldn't get a hand on it. With 8.24 remaining here in the fourth, Tucson has extended the lead. 412careers.com. Are you looking for a career that offers stability, growth, and job satisfaction? Consider joining UA Local 412. Our members receive industry-leading training, competitive wages, and benefits that support you and your family. Don't just find a job, start a career in the trades. Visit our website or call us now to learn more about how to become a member. UA Local 412, 412careers.com. With the increase in sales of fake pills on social media platforms, the fentanyl epidemic continues to grow, especially amongst high school students. It's now the leading cause of overdose. You know I'm here for you. If you need any help. Mom, I think I need help. Keep NM alive. It starts with a conversation. Welcome back to the event center here in Rio Rancho. 56-42, seven touchdowns Malik Mitchell has accounted for. Four on the ground, three to the air. He's been unstoppable. Turnable ball for Thomas all the way at the wall. Has a crease. Cuts back up the middle. Still on his feet. The kicker has to drag him down at the 15. Great return by Thomas. There is a flag back oh, at the no. 10. Holding. During the return, holding number oh, 24. Return team. Coming to be enforced half the distance to the goal. It is first down. Second big return that's been wiped out. A lot of penalty. To see Coach Brody, Landry Brody isn't happy with the, the holding call there. And wiped rightfully so. Uh, you go from starting this, this drive in Tucson at the Tucson 15. Now you're back up in your own five yard line. Puts a lot of pressure on Javin Kill though here on this drive. Coach Brody was asking what the penalty count was. That was the Gladiators 10th penalty. Tucson has committed 13. So 23 accepted penalties tonight with 7.50 to go. Hand off to Carr. 
See, I think that's where on that play you kind of see the difference between outdoor and indoor football. You saw that little hole door there, and Carr didn't take it and explode through it. He was looking for the edge. I think that's that adjustment to the carpet, right? Like when you get indoors, you see a little hole. That's where you got to go. Exactly. You got to hit it. It's not the field isn't big enough for you to to pass up an opportunity or to pause or to hop skip. Once you get it, you got to hit it. And you got to think that the Sugar Skulls are going to try to take away the run game and put a lot of pressure on, on Kilgo to beat him, beat them with his arm. Oh, I mean, no doubt about that. Second and 12, a loss on the play. Dumps it off to Carr. Flag coming out of the defensive secondary. Carr tackled across the 15-yard line. Let's see what the penalty is here. This is going against Tucson, I believe. Illegal contact, number 23, defense. The penalty be a decline. The result of the play is a first down. It's a decline penalty. They'll take the play. Again, the running back wide open there. Javin did a great job of dumping it off to him. And Carr picked up the first down. But that's something that Javin's going to have to continue to do. And that's not try to force the ball down the field like he's been doing in the previous drive. Just luckily, it hasn't resulted in, 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 in an interception. Take what the defense gives you. If they give you that little dump down, give it to your running back, and let them pick up five, six, seven, eight yards here. He'll go pumps, looking. Now he'll just dump it off to Carr, trying to put a move on Sheffield. And Sheffield had the face mask there, it looked like, because the head went jerking back, I thought. It looked like it. And it was, I mean, the referee was right there. Yeah. He had the best view, so maybe it, it was a jersey he grabbed or Let's take another look here if we got a hand in the face mask. Nope. Yeah, he had his jersey. Got his arm. Great call in the field. And again, the official was right there. It's yep. a great call. For as many as we question, they're right a hell of a lot more than we are. He'll go up with man up the middle. It's Sloan in to Tucson territory. Sloan's dynamic with the football. The Gladiators have to find a way to, to get the ball in his hands a lot more. Between Sloan and Greg Dan Jr., these are two guys who are dynamic with the ball in their hands after the catch. So they're going to have to get the ball down the field. It doesn't always have to be a big play. We know they can make those big plays downfield, but to help Javin Kill go out and help the rhythm of this offense, get, the, get those guys the ball in space and let them do what they do best. New set of downs now in Sugar Skulls territory. Gladiator fans wanted the flag there. Not going to get it as Journey Sloan. There was a little bit of bump in there before the. We'll take a look at the replay in a moment here as the boos pour us down onto the field. I mean, and the referees have not been shy with the flag. I mean, Tucson has more flags let's, than the Gladiators as well. Let's I, take another look here. I think I like this no call, Sebastian. Yeah, I like that. I like that no call. I mean, you just got to go up and get the ball. I mean, that's, you can call face guard, and you can argue for the call, or you can go out and make the play. He'll go. Fires into the end zone. That's good. That that's one's good. coming, though. Yep. Dent. Yeah, that was an easy call. Drew the pass interference there. It occurred in the end zone. And spot the ball at the two-yard line. Let's go downstairs for the official announcement. Pass interference, number 23, defense. 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. He was hugging Dent when the ball was in the air. Yeah, that's an easy call. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're gonna all over Dent. Two hands, hug, bear hug. Buy the guy dinner first. <laughs> and again, coming up here on four minutes left in the ball game, I mean, I know the Gladiators have been methodical thus far in the game, you know, moving the ball down the field, but a sense of urgency is going to have to come here pretty soon here. They struggled to score last time they were in this position, but they did eventually punch it in. Exactly. But after a couple of unsuccessful negative runs for Carr, they finally punched it in. Kill go under center now. Will he try to keep this? Fakes to Carr, has a man, and it's Greg Dent Jr. 
Touchdown, Gladiators. That's a great call by offensive coordinator Landry Brody. First and goal down there, you're anticipating a, a, a typical run play or a toss sweep zone read, which is the Gladiators have been doing thus far. He uses that to his, his, his advantage. He goes with the play action. The entire defense goes with the run, even for that hesitation quick step. Right there, a perfect replay by our crew there upstairs. They got Farrell to bite, and he bit hard in the wrong direction. It gave the Greg Dent just enough time to sneak across the back of the end zone for the easy touchdown. Time Matt Skirt on replay. Jason Paul directing tonight. Lakayo for the traditional extra point, and it's good. 3-11 remaining in this ball game. 56-49 Tucson. I'm David C. Chavez. Just like you, we see terrible motorcycle, semi-truck, and car wrecks every day. We fight to win for you. I'm a top 10 nationally ranked injury attorney, but I'm still as local as red and green. Are you ready for Ram Truck Month at Malloy Ram in Los Lunas? With huge discounts and new trucks arriving daily when you think Welcome back to the Rio Rancho Event Center. 56-49. Do we expect a deuce onside kick here? What do you, what do you like, Daryl? It's a seven-point ball game right here. I think you go for the. Or it's played straight up. Yeah, I think you just go for the deuce. Again, the deuce though does put them at midfield. So if you trust your defense here, with a complement of timeouts, a lot of options is what we're saying. I go for the deuce, try to cut this to a five-point ball game. They go on side, takes the high hop. That was a touch by Tucson, and Duke City has recovered the football. That first touch was off a yellow jersey. It's Tucson ball as Craig Dent Jr. comes up with it. There is an injured player on the play. That's a great job by the Gladiators recovering that onside kick. Much needed play there. We got to clear down. Jadarius Bird is down on the field, but the onside kick was recovered. Watch it again. First touch was Tucson here, I believe. On replay, it'll show that. And it does. You see that went off of number four, Sheffield. Gladiators recover the onside. The Watch it once more. Was first touched by a member of the receiving team. It was. And then recovered off by the a member of, of the kicking team. Great first down. Play by Duke City. Dent being Johnny on the spot though to recover that onside kick. Now the Gladiators are right on the doorstep. This is a great opportunity for the Gladiators to try to take a shot down the field just to catch the defense off guard here. Pick the matchup that you like. Greg Dennis. Greg Dennis made a lot of big plays here for the Gladiators, not only this season, but in, the, in, in, in his history and his tenure here with the Gladiators. But it should be noted that was always with somebody else throwing him the football. So Javin's going to have to author his moment here. Exactly. And he has a chance to do it right now. Pick your matchup. Pick the guy that you want to, that, that you trust the most to, to come down and make a play for you. And let's see, let's take a shot down the field. Or does Landrick Brody want to use the entirety of the clock here and hope that this is the last possession and matriculate down the field? It's complete to Concliffe at the 15. The ankle tackle there for Sheffield. Good to see Concliffe back on the on the field after taking that shot to the head when his helmet came off early in the ball game. He's an effective veteran target here for the Gladiators. 
Here's the thing, Daryl, is that one's complete at the sticks. Jackson drives Sloan into the wall. Here's the thing, though. Either you got to score really quick or you got to drain this clock. Exactly. Because you got to have the ball last. This is looking like that kind of game where the ball, whoever has the ball last. So they're able to use most of the clock here. I mean, Mitchell has done a great job of carving the Gladiators defense, but it hasn't been a lot of deep balls and deep shots down the field. So if they can force him into that predicament here, hey, that that favors the Gladiators. He'll go looking down the field. Incomplete. Phelps on the coverage. Sloan and a late flag. Should be for interference. Yeah, they're going to get Jalen Phelps on the old grab and tug here. Watch it. He grabs the receiver with that Pass backhand and tries to Number 21, deflect it with the right. Ball in place in the spot of the foul. It Great is an automatic the first down. Of, of catching that. A lot of DBs get away with that. They're able to do it pretty smooth. And You're not just saying that because you're a receiver, right? Oh, yeah. But, you know, of course I am. But this could be. they do get away with that a lot, <laughs> more so than not. This if they're could, able to do it pretty slick, then they get away with it. This could be a battle of managing the clock down the stretch. We saw that last week. We saw Dixie Wooten play chess with Kevin Guy last week, and Dixie won that matchup with the clock at the end. He was trying to score. Kevin was going to let him. Then they wouldn't. Drag hard shot into the wall is Carr. So the Rattlers were trying to score, or the Rattlers were trying to let him score. Dixie Wooten wasn't having it. He won that chess match with the clock against Kevin Guy. It might come down to something like that here. I think so. And the clock's ticking with 110 left here in the ball game. The Sugar Skulls do have all three of their timeouts remaining. The Gladiators have one. Yeah, I was about to say, you got to think they're going to use, well, we got the one minute warning here. That'll take There's us to one, one minute, minute warning. Remaining in regulation. Gladiators probably want to hold on to that timeout in case they need to challenge something down the stretch. 56-49, Tucson. Sit means sit. Albuquerque's dog training experts. We offer in-home dog and puppy obedience training. Contact us at 505-916-1748 to schedule a free dog training evaluation. The Southwest Carpenters Local 1319 wants you to find a fulfilling career in our community. Call us at 505-266-8869 to find out more. one of those times when you got to use your legs. I mean, you're already in the scrambling mode. Take what the defense gives you. Use your legs. I don't care if it's one yard, two yards, five yards. Pick up those, those yards and live to fight another down. Watch it here. So Javin does a great job of escaping the pocket there. You have all this room. Run. Run to the wall. You, you stop the you clock and two, you pick up positive yards. You throw it into two yellow jerseys. Nothing else could have resulted from that other than a game losing interception there. Yeah, you gotta run, you use your legs, run that ball, get to the wall, it stops the clock, you pick up positive yards, it's a win-win, and you, you, you get to keep the ball. It's like a broken record. How much longer will the leash be?
They brought in Jeremy Hickbottom this week. Hand off to Mike Jones. Gladiators will have one chance to stop the clock here. Coach Griggs will take it. We'll be back with 44.1 remaining. Timeout, Duke City, their first of the second half. Gladiators, 56-49. Mitchell sends two in motion, fakes to Tate. He'll keep it himself. Get dragged down. The Gladiators do not have the... I didn't think they had any left. But apparently they did. Timeout. Duke City. We thought their we second charge out of timeout. the second half. No, they do have one remaining. So they had all three timeouts. So I think there was a they were challenge. They had one challenge remaining. So they do have a timeout remaining. All right. So obviously you need a you need a strip here, right? Uh, 37 seconds left. You got one timeout left. And you're coming up here on third and five. But you got to. That's that's your really only hope here. You got got to find a way to create some type of a turnover. I'm gonna have to look at your roster. I crumpled mine up when the interception was thrown. Uh, so, the kicker Fontenos has been very good for Tucson today. So, I mean, if you're Billy back, you don't have any issues trotting him out there if you have to. Yeah, that's true. That's a good point. But I'm sure he'd much rather just end it in the arms of either Mitchell or Jones. It is Mike Jones. Brought down from behind there by... Tad Onwu. Gladiators will take their final timeout. We'll stay here. Timeout. Before New City. Play start, you saw their third and final of regulation. Craig Griggs reiterating to his defensive players strip the ball. You got to create a turnover. You got to get a strip on the ball. Hold him up, strip, do whatever you can. Please reset the game clock to 32 seconds. 32. They're going to put some more time on the clock as well. 32.3. They'll go from 30.9 to 32.3. That was the Gladiators' final timeout. Fourth down, what does Coach Back want to do? This is the offense that's in the huddle. I think Coach Back trusts his offense. What Mitchell and, and Mike Jones have been able to do uh, thus far in the ball game, and these guys, between one of them, I imagine he's going to give it put it on one of those two guys to, to make the play, the game-winning play, the game-clinching play here for the Sugar Skulls. And if you're, as far as the Gladiators, this is the down. This is the biggest down in the ball game here. You gotta get a stop here to get the ball back to your offense with maybe about 26, 27 seconds left here in the ball game. I think they're gonna keep this in the hands of Mitchell. Has a man. Caught for the first. It's complete to Tate. And you see Griggs telling his, his defensive back, play up. And in that situation, you got to know he's not going to throw the ball deep. There's no point in, in, in lagging back off of the wide receiver. Know that it's going to be a quick game, quick, quick type of throw. Play press up coverage, play man. Mitchell will take the knee, and that will do it. Tucson will win it 56 49. We'll take a timeout and talk to head coach Billy Back and the player of the game right after this as Tucson picks up their first win of the season. They might have to snap it one more time here. Two second differential between play clock and game clock, but this one is over. Stay tuned though, we'll talk to coach Back and get a word with Malik Mitchell as well. Thank you. 
Paletta Bar Tramway. Our paletas are high quality pops and a delicious healthy choice. Our refreshing flavors are the perfect treat for the summertime. Come and see us at 12501 Candelaria Road Northeast, Suite D. Sit means sit, Albuquerque's dog training experts. We offer in-home dog and puppy obedience training. Contact us at 505-916-1748 to schedule a free dog training evaluation. You're a crack of dome, Monday morning coffee, strong pour, and everything you got into a paycheck Friday night. The Southwest Carpenters, Local 1390, wants you to find a fulfilling career in our community. In between the lines of clocking in and quitting time. But then the six string circus comes to town. Call us at 505 266 8869 to find out more. Player of the game was a no doubter tonight. Malik Mitchell goes 14 for 17 for a buck 46. Seven combined touchdowns, four of them on the ground, three of them through the air. You were pretty unstoppable out there tonight. Talk about what you were seeing. Man, just uh, guys doing their job. Coaches, you know, coaches well through the week. Just come out here and have fun. That's all it is. You know, you, you have that option of handing it to Big Mike, right, the gladiator killer, or keeping it, and you guys read that well all night. I mean, what was the defense doing where you guys seemingly always had the right read on that? I mean, uh, they, they got to have their spots covered, man. They got to cover Mike. They got to cover me. And they got to, it takes a lot to do that. So, you know, they had their hands full. They played well. Down, uh, one score game, you know, we'll, we'll see them next game. Hopefully they bring their stuff. We're going to bring ours. Well, it's good to get that first one out of the way, right? What does this do for the team's confidence moving forward? Oh, we needed that, man, to see a W on the board. A uh, bunch of guys who never played together, uh, you know, so to get a win together, it means a lot. And I would say an early favorite for IFL Offensive Player of the Week this week, right? Hey, man, it, I mean, <laughs> them little things don't mean too much, man. It's about to win, to be honest with you. Thanks, Malik. No problem. Appreciate you. 56-49, final oh, score. Oh, Coach Billy, get in here, Billy. We thought you were hiding from us today. Billy Bax, the head coach, good to get that first, all right? Man, it feels really good. It feels good. Duke City played a great game. They always played us tough. Um, came down a couple of key plays here and there. It just was a difference. Talk about that that young guy, man. Seven touchdowns, four on the ground, three through the air. He's smooth operator. He's smooth, calm, cool, and collected, poised. Uh, throws at every arm angle. Uh, he's going to be a good one. You guys had more penalties than you have shoes on tonight. So talk about that. That's obviously something you don't want to clean up, right? Yes, yes. Uh, we, I mean, I wanted to be kind of more of a aggressor this year, this week. Not as much as we were, uh, but you know, for the most part, we, we showed energy. And I'll take those those penalties to show an energy like that. And I got a blister in the first half. I had to switch to the comfortable shoes. So it was a blister, Daryl. It was not a fashion statement. It was a blister. All right, Coach. Appreciate your time as always. Tucson gets their first win. Gladiators still searching for those. Game ends in another interception. 56-49. Thanks to the entire Provi Networks team. Good night.
different track. You still on that same play. Pop spit it out, but I got family sitting chain lace. Oh, you about that action? Tell them boys you about the same thing. Get your popcorn ready. Half made, half amazing. Human highlight reel. You gon' see my name in Beijing. Heavy rep I take. You'll see the pain that made me. It's gritty on a gridiron. Only one of us can stay king. Touchdown every time I touch down. And my defense shut down every time I touch ground. Yeah, lying harder, but I got the eye of an eagle. I put the city on my back. Look, I'm gonna ride for my people. And once I take the stage, I'ma start like evil can I built the conquer heights. My mind's a Danny DeVito. And once I get my first ring, I'm manifesting the sequel. Yo, this the IFL. Swear to many come heroes in the man. Are you ready for that?